In Sporting America, we revel in putting rooting emotions on the side of the underdog. Now, for those who haven't tasted sweet success with any regularity, we as fans love to see their efforts rewarded. Their enthusiasm and thirst for victory achieved through hard work, accountability, and team chemistry. Kent State's golden flashes have endured the tough times. Now they sit on the verge of the ultimate exultation. Well, there's more work to be done to be sure, yet that championship feeling is beginning to permeate the Kent State program. Stay put, it's Ohio and Kent State coming at you next. This final Saturday in the month of October finds a championship flavor around Dick Stadium here at the campus of Kent State University. You've got to get yourself uh, indeed ready, and the Ohio fans know that, as we get you set for this MAC East Division battle as Frank Solich brings his Ohio Bobcats riding their three-game win streak in to see Doug Martin and the Kent State Golden Flash is a perfect 4-0 in MAC play. Hey, why is this one so pivotal today? All we have to do is take a look at our Gatorade East Division back standings. Kent State has never started a MAC campaign 4-0. They've done it this year under Doug Martin, but how about the Ohio Bobcats? 3-1, so you see an Ohio win today. Could have a pair sharing the penthouse in the MAC East by day's end. Great to see you, everybody. Delighted you're here. Welcome to another Saturday of Mac Football. I'm Michael Rega. My partner is Bob Kamel. Make no mistake that Frank Solich at Ohio and Doug Martin with these Kent State Golden Flashes, they're the two gentlemen that have certainly resurrected these programs from at the bottom of the Mac East now toward the top. It's all about accountability and being patient to, to achieve your success. These two guys have done that this year, Bob. There's an old saying in coaching, so above, so below. In other words, the team assumes the personality of the head football coach. Frank Solich, so long in the Nebraska program, they will play tough defense, they'll run the football, they'll prepare, and they'll have a fine kicking game. On the other side of the field, Doug Martin, very methodical, very businesslike, no mistakes. That is reflective in the play of his team. And these two football teams indeed are extensions of their head coaches and coaching staffs. Now we know you like to multitask offensively, right? And if you're a quarterback in these two systems, you have to be a multitasker. That means you've got to be diverse, and that's exactly what Austin Everson has been in running Frank Solich's offensive system. Indeed, Austin Everson, very strong, very tough, a leader, gets his team into the right play. I have actually see him throw a block on a defensive back to spring the running back into the end zone. He did that, indeed, in that big win over Western Michigan. And last year, there was a young man that was playing at San Mateo Junior College in California. He said, I want to come east and be a Kent State Golden Flash and run that spread offense. And Julian Edelman has opened eyes all over the college football landscape. Julian Edelman, who leads one of the most diverse offensive attacks in entire NCAA college football scene. He'll go under center. He'll take a shotgun. He'll run option football. He's the total package. And defensive coordinators are having their hands full to try to deal with Julian Edelman and this Kent State offense. But you know what? Defense still wins championship within the Mid-American Conference. That's Danny Muir and Usama Young of Kent State. They're number one defensively. But that Ohio defense under Frank Solich is right behind the Golden Flashes statistically. Get set. Battle for first in the MAC East comes at you next. Had uh, kind of a, a light snowstorm. This is about 10 minutes ago. As you see, our producer Greg Logan and director Mark Jones showing us 10 minutes ago, about 150. Temperatures under 40 degrees, gusty winds, sunshine out right now. Pleased to be joined by the third member of our telecast team in the sidelines, Jeff Phelps, who says prognosticators sometimes aren't always correct, but maybe some have an eye on the future, Jeff. I think that's exactly right, Michael. After a 1-10 season last year, who gave Kent State a chance of doing absolutely anything this year? Well, would you believe two people? Bill Curry, a football analyst for ESPN, and the man who publishes this publication every year, College Football Preview, by Phil Steele. Both said Kent State would win the MAC East. They both had very valid reasons. Phil said last year was more of an aberration than anything else. He looked back to two years ago when the Flashes won their last four games, thought they had a terrific defense, and thought some changes in the offense would help the defense this year. Well, they both turned out to be right so far, guys. We will see. In fact, Phil Steele said that Ohio and Kent State would tie for the Mackey's title, but Kent would get it because they would win this game. So Doug Martin, Frank Solich doing things that not too many people expected this year, except maybe Phil Steele. Guys? 
A prognosticator uh, to be exact is Phil Steele. Nice chapeau, too, from Jeff Phelps. We'll see a lot of that chapeau and uh, Jeffrey as the afternoon wears on. We invite you to settle back and enjoy it. As we said, first place in the Mac East at stake as uh, having it all lined up is Nate Reed for Kent State. To boot it away, and this is Taylor Price that's going to come out of that end zone for Ohio. Price with a little bit of a seam over the 23-yard line, so that is uh, where the... Ohio offense will begin under the direction of Austin Everson. He started all 11 football games for Frank Solich and his Ohio offense back in the 05 season. This young man is as tough as they come. Kind of as you said, Bob, a guy that's not, a, not adverse to getting out and throwing blocks on reverses. The young man from Brentwood, Tennessee, that's been at the trigger of this football team winning three in a row. Calvin McCray in the one back. First carry of the afternoon to Calvin McRae, who's had three straight 100-yard rushing efforts to his credit. Got a couple. Let's take a look at uh, offensively for this Ohio football team that uh, under Frank Solich has improved. There's Calvin McRae, Mitch Morcillo, terrific to tailback. They'll go three wide a lot with Cheeto Wokocha and Scott Mayo the burner. Rudy Sylvan is a 275-pound tight end. This offensive line's been getting better and better. Mike Einon has been a young man that has stabilized things as he's moved from tackle to guard. And Matt Miller on that right side, that 311-pound junior one of the real heavy lifters. On that inside reverse, give the football to the top freshman punt returner in the nation, Chris Garrett. But there's that defense for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Danny Muir making that stop. Kevin Hogan, a true freshman with a terrific burst, gets a start at defensive end. Anthony Dugarte and Colin Farrell, the big men in the middle, and Daniel Muir tackles for loss especially. The linebackers, uh, Stefan Moss, the inside backer, is uh, the bellwether of that group. And this secondary is one of the most experienced and hardest-hitting secondaries in the country. Usama Young, Jack Williams on the corner with Fritz Jacquez and Andre Kirkland at the safeties. Everson looking to put it up, but he's in a whole lot of trouble, and down he goes. Set time as Colin Farrell was in on that hit, along with Kevin Hogan. Hogan, the 210-pound true freshman defensive end who just can't be blocked. I mean, he is really aggressive. He keeps his feet up underneath him. He continues to pursue relentlessly. Let's remember one thing about this Kent State defense. They are 11th nationally in sacks in the entire country. They are 11th. What a great job they've done up front. Yeah, they're first in the Mid-American Conference. Uh, that secondary, uh, Bob, as we said, yeah, they're tremendous in, in coverage, and that they help support that run game. But as we know, pressure on the quarterback certainly helps that. This is Matt Lasher, the talented Ohio kicker, to boot it away into that breeze. He's going to get a roll out to the midfield strike, and that's after that 28-yard punt from Lasher, who uh, helped Ohio win at Champaign, Illinois a couple of weeks ago with that big field goal with only five seconds left. So here's where Julian Edelman, the 195-pound sophomore out of Redwood City, California, they call him Sunshine. <laughs> and oh, has he spread a lot of that here at Kent, Ohio. Well, needless to say, he gets up underneath the football. The weather changes, and we have sunshine. <laughs> I like the breakdown, Coach. Go with a couple of wide on the first snap of the afternoon. Now run that option. Try it to his Julian Edelman, but he is taken down by Matt Muncie, the 240-pound senior linebacker, one of the best in the business. Let's take a look at the Kent State offense. Eugene Jarvis, that uh, diminutive tailback. And Najee Pruden stands second on the receiving list in touchdowns and in uh, receptions here in Kent history. You saw Craig Raftall, that, uh, that big right guard on the offensive line, one of those heavy lifters for head coach Doug Bart. Julian Edelman on the keep there. And Edelman was able to uh, get a couple down inside the 45. This is a, an improving defensive front for Ohio. Landon Cohen. Uh, is uh, the man that runs things in the middle along with Shane Yates. The linebackers, Matt Muncy, you just saw him a moment ago. T.J. Wright, the outstanding corner, the senior, a man for the state of Texas. Edelman to put it up. And we're going to get a flag, and that's going to be interference. They wanted to throw that, uh, that slant route toward the end to Sean Bays, the sophomore, and T.J. Wright had a little bit too much contact. Well, this is going to be a timing pass. In, in other words, he's going to take a three-step look, get the football. The ball's going to be put up Julian Edelman right on the money, just a little bit premature in the aggressiveness of T.J. Wright. As you mentioned earlier, this is an outstanding defense. Number three, 
The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. As I said, this is an out, a right is an outstanding corner. Perhaps in that time, and we don't want to say it was a, it was a good, uh, you know, infraction. I'll tell you this, that ball's caught on the run. He's still running. T.J. Wright, he'll be fine. Well, that'll keep the drive alive. Now, the first carry of the after afternoon, that's Eugene Jarvis at 5'5", about 160 pounds. Don't let that fool you. Tough guy as he ran into Matt Muncy after a gain a couple. Uh, Jarvis will share the tailback chores with Tony Howard, that Michigan State transfer who we saw put a couple touchdowns on the board a few weeks ago here in the win over Akron. See, the one thing with the one-back offense that you see, Michael, is this. You can account for everybody up front, but you cannot account for the linebacker, and Muncy is something special. Second and six on that quick hitter, Eugene Jarvis. To the second level, did you see the moves he put on? Inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. That's a 15-yard tote of the football. First down, Kent State. But watch this play right here. Watch his feet. His feet never move. He's completely explosive. But at the, from the other side of the football, these guys have to wrap this guy. You have to tackle him. You have to get a piece of him, hang on, wait for the pursuit to come, and take him to the ground. Yeah, Kent State, uh, this was Doug Martin's concern. They had the bye week last week, and uh, they felt they had to come out and start quickly. Edelman will run that option. Uh, Julian Edelman spun out of a Muncie tackle. Edelman still alive inside the 15 and down near the 12 yard line. That should have been stopped for no gain, but Edelman made Muncie miss. Well, Edelman's an outstanding athlete, aside from being just a great quarterback. I mean, he can do it all. Here's option football a little fake inside, a little fake outside. Then he gets out on the perimeter, and he's also very physical. This is an outstanding, outstanding talent at the quarterback position for Kent State. Give Edelman six, second and four. This is Eugene Jarvis, and no, says Matt Muncie as he got swallowed up. Muncie and number eight. You're going to love Todd Koenig. Keep an eye on him all afternoon long. Hard-hitting 212-pound junior. He supports the run, Bob. We think we've talked about it. Doug Martin said that, uh, yeah, yeah, as much yesterday, that Koenig comes up, supports the run as well as any strong safety in the conference. Well, he's a bit of a hybrid. He's a defensive back who also can tackle like a linebacker. And that's what you want in a strong safety when you're going up a predominant against a predominantly running team. Outstanding young player from Bishop Carroll High School. All right, third and five now. Edelman out of the gun. Edelman on that quarterback keep, but he is not going to be able to wiggle free. He was able to bust one tackle, but finally Edelman got to collared at about the 12-yard line. And uh, that play made by Mark Parson, there you see the, uh, the sophomore cornerback, who was so big in the last couple of wins for uh, Ohio. Well, one of the things right there, Landon Cohen and Ernie Hodge, the defensive lineman, they get pursuit. And this forces Edelman to readjust his route while he's doing that. The linebackers continue to pursue. He had to redirect himself because of the play of the defensive lineman. All right, this is going to bring up a fourth down, and let's call it a long three. The line to make is down at the nine-yard line. With this clock running on this first drive of the afternoon for the Kent State Golden Flashes. 4-0 in Mac play for the first time in their history. They haven't had a six-game win streak in the last 30 years. Last time they did it, 76-77. Four wide now with Jarvis at the tail on fourth and three. Edelman will start that speed option right, and he is going to be thrown to the ground. Outstanding defensive play by Landon Cohen, 280-pound junior. There's Cohen, who wears number 55. Frank Solich told us this week, Bob, keep an eye on Landon Cohen. He has been wrecking havoc on his defensive front the last few weeks. So Kent State thwarted on that fourth down opportunity in the red zone. Ohio gets the football back when we return. American Conference in the East Division. Kent State a perfect 4-0. Ohio right behind him at 3-1. And, and both these ball clubs uh, playing fine football of late. Along with Central Michigan and maybe Western Michigan, you can make a case. Those four the finest football uh, in the Mac Bob over the course of the last few weeks. You know, we talked about the wind. The wind has changed three or four times. Yep. These kickers and these special teams coaches will be keeping an eye on these flags throughout the course of the game. Well, Austin Everson with uh, his fullback, Mitch Morcillo, and Calvin McCray behind him on that quick drop. That throw is caught as he uh, came here near sideline as he found Justin Fitzgerald. Calvin McCray, young man who rushed for over 1,100 yards a year ago. Bob, look at the difference, wins and losses. When McCray's got it rolling and fluid, usually spells success for Ohio. 
One of the things with a great running back like this, the more often you give him the football in a particular game and he has success, they build upon success. They almost look as, at the end of the game as they're fresher or in better shape or their legs are better, more so than even in the beginning of the game. You get a great tailback like this, give him the football. He's got the football. Calvin McCray, and he's free in open space up this near boundary and finally run out of bounds by Fritz Jacquez. 18 yards on that burst. Right on cue is Mr. McCray as we show when he runs well. Ohio is usually on the win side. What you see here, you see every offensive lineman has what we refer to as a hat on a hat. In other words, everybody is accounted for. McCray chokes his motor down just a little bit. You have to be patient to be a great tailback. Find that lateral crease in the defense, zingle, take it and get downfield. And there it is, nine touchdowns this year. He knows how to find the end zone, doesn't he? Calvin McCray, this man from the state of Georgia. Give the football to McCray again. This first down call, a lot of blue shirts there. This Kent State defense, they swarm, as we said, statistically. They're number one in the Mid-American Conference and allowing just 17 a game as big Colin Farrell gets off the ground for making the stop. What we're going to see here, we're going to see a hat on a hat all the way down the line. We're going to see the tailback come up, be patient, single, take off with the football. A hat on a hat. Everybody's accounted for. There's the seam. He takes the seam right there, and he's upfield. That, my friends, is great tailback play. Run with a couple tight ends now, that big jumbo power formation on second and eight on that power isolation handoff to Calvin McCray, but oh, did that Kent State defense swallow that up. Daniel Muir wears number five. They moved him from inside to outside this season. Watch the great pursuit here. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight Kent tacklers around the football. That's what you want to see. That Pete Rectus, Pete Rectus, the defensive coordinator, he preaches this every day in practice, as he told us. Great defenses pursue as a group. They travel in packs. You hear Coach Camel's defensive passion coming out <laughs> early with all those blue shirts around the football. This brings up a third and nine now for Austin Everson. Going to go out of the shotgun and put it up. Throw that quick in route. He's got Chris Garrett, that speedy freshman. But Garrett got into that wash in the middle. I saw Fritz Jacquez, that, that free safety, come up and make the hit. And Kevin Hogan, that true freshman, had a part of the stop as well. As you mentioned, Fritz, Fritz Jacquez, this young guy analyzes the play. He comes off of one block, pursues, gets his hat in there. This is great, great team defense by Kent State. This is fun to watch. Well, this is why we said, yes, the Kent State spread offense uh, can uh, make the scoreboard light up, but defensively, the improvement in this football team has been monumental. Matt Lasher did a pretty nice job getting that into that stiff breeze and got the good roll down uh, to the 22-yard line. So a 42-yard boot for Matt Lasher, the outstanding punter and field goal kicker of this Ohio football team. Second possession for the Golden Flashes. We're scoreless. In here in Northeast Ohio, as uh, the winds of weather, they are a-changing, but we're delighted that uh, you're a part of it with us uh, here all along the MAC Television Network. Michael Regai, Bob Kamel, Jeff Phelps down on the sidelines. As I've said, first place on the line now, the penthouse, right, where everybody aspires to be in the MAC East. Kent State's there right now. Perfect 4-0, but they hear footsteps, and they've got company from this Ohio squad. Julian Edelman out of the shotgun. Edelman with time. Now that pocket will collapse, and Edelman still trying to dance around. But Jamison Hartke said, no, you won't, as Hartke with this pressure. All right, now we've talked about the Kent State defense being better. This Ohio defense unheralded, but they've improved dramatically as well. I don't think there's any question, and, and, and that's that's Frank Solich. You know, coming out of the Nebraska program, 25 years, he actually played there. It's defense first, kicking game second, and offense third, and have the ability to run the football. That's the philosophy of a Frank Solich. On second and two now, Edelman again on a quarterback keep, but he ran into Ernie Hodge, 245-pound true freshman is Ernie Hodge, who enrolled at Ohio last year in the winter quarter out of Hargrave Military Academy. Again, what we see from the other side of the football here with the Bobcats, great pursuit, relentless play, good leverage, everybody running to the football. It is evident by the play of both of these teams right now how much they want to win this football game and how important it is to them. As the hail and sleep comes down on third and 14, Edelman with time on play action. Going to air it out as that football flutters and uh, lands on that uh, that white boundary and out of bounds. So 
Edelman uh, tried to put some air under that problem was the gusting winds carried it out of bounds three and out for Kent State. Well, actually Edelman's pass right there was better out of bounds because he was throwing the football into double coverage. Can't have that. You have to be a little bit patient early here. I'd like to see Kent State run some screens and maybe perhaps a couple of draw plays, loosen up the Bobcat defense, and then maybe take a shot downfield. Had to boot it away is a Jake Kilroy, but the most dynamic freshman kick returner in the land is inside the 50-yard line. Oh, and this punt is going to come up off the side of the foot of Jake Kilroy. This will go down for maybe negative yardage on that punt. It, it might be right out of bounds, right where the line of scrimmage was at the 18-yard line. We're going to see here, Kilroy is, is under a bit of distress, but at the same time, he has to extend that leg and get the punt off. He rushed it. He rushed this punt. Disruptive action right there, the punt. It was going to be a directional kick. In other words, he was aiming it away from the re return man who was so dangerous to the right side. The ball went off the side of his foot. And that's a minus one for Jake Kilroy. You talk about starting to drive on a short field. How does the 18-yard line sound with the I formation behind Austin Everson, the Ohio quarterback? One toss sweep to Von Kerry Owens, who's come free. Von Kerry Owens has got the corner. He's into the house. Touchdown, Ohio. Von Kerry Owens. Watch Mike Anyon, the left guard on this play. The big guy, 6'3", 300 pounds, number 76, pulling and just getting just enough. That's all he needs. And there's the lateral crease as we see it. Now it's all a matter of taking the football into the end zone. That big guy, Enyon, ooh, that was a wonderful, wonderful pull and trap block. A young man from Westlake, Ohio, as we're doing the lineups, we singled him out. Where's uh, number 76? Uh, Mike Einan, 300-pound sophomore. Bob, they moved him from tackle inside the guard when they had some dismissals and some injuries earlier this year. Cleveland St. Ignatius High School, oh, yeah. the legendary Chico Kyle. You go yeah. there and recruit, you're going to get yourself a football player. Oh, yeah, one of the uh, tradition popular programs in the state of Ohio. And in that PAT is Matt Lasher, Von Kerry Owens, 190-pound senior. Found the promised land to get Ohio on the board first. Yeah, you score the touchdown if you're Von Kerry Owens, and now you got to go out and play special teams. But, well, last year, 35-32 down in Peden Stadium, the Ohio win. Von Kerry had a huge afternoon. Well, you know, with the cutback in scholarships, Michael, you know, there were 105 at one time, then it was 100, then it was 90, then it was 95. You don't have the luxury of having the type of talent that you can put on the field for special teams that rests some of your starters. You have to have your best 11 people on the field every time. Sean Bays, Tony Howard back in the deep spot, says uh, Matt Lasher will drive that boot to Bays about five yards deep, but Tony Howard says, wait a minute, wait a minute, teammate. Take a knee to start this uh, offensive series at the 20-yard line. And Bob, we've discussed uh, how much at stake there is for this Kent State football program. Ohio as well, as this one is played in, uh, shall we say, uh, the somewhat uh, diverse weather conditions today at Dick Stadium here in Northeast Ohio. Jeff Phelps down the sideline, my partner Bob Kamel, I'm Michael Regai, and for the first couple of series for the Kent State Golden Flashes, and again, they're coming off a bye week now, and they haven't been able to generate uh, the offense uh, that uh, Doug Martin was hopeful that uh, they would. And of course, the week of preparation for Frank Solich and his uh, defensive coordinator, Jimmy Burrow, and this whole staff, at least in the first couple of series, they look like they've got a handle on things, what Kent State's trying to accomplish offensively. Julian Edelman is a total, total headache for any defensive coordinator. As I mentioned before, he can do it all. You can't prepare for everything. And there is a school of thought defensively that the more a team does early on, the less you react to it. Don't get into a chess game with them. So what we're seeing the Ohio Bobcats do here is playing fundamental football. They're, they're pad under pad. They're staying in their rush lanes. They're pursuing and they are challenging Edelman to maybe go a little bit deeper, deeper into that, that playbook and see what happens. Uh, Frank Solis not happy with that, though. Uh, offsides, Ohio, and now this will give Bays on the re-kick an opportunity from the three. Uh, Sean Bays will break a tackle and finally be uh, grounded at the 24-yard line, but we've got uh, another flag on that re-kick, and uh, we shall see as uh, referee Alex Kemp will let us know. Offsides, kicking team. 
Number 31. Frank Solich. Five yard penalty. Is going to be furious. Re -kick. Coach Kamel, you could tell us why. Well, because if you're if you're on the sideline, you're a special teams coach you're a, or a head coach. I, I like to use a tennis term here. This is an unforced error. It's kind of ironic talking about tennis and watching Frank Solich, but this is an unforced error. This is avoidable by discipline and doing the right thing. Now, you've got a bunch of guys on, on kickoff teams. They want to be the first guy down there. They want to make the block. Frank here disagrees with the offside, obviously. I see Frank Solich there. Uh, he is having his say, and... Uh, out a few yards onto the uh, onto the uh, the field here at Dick Stadium to talk to a uh, back judge uh, Larry Arico. So now that's going to push this uh, Matt Lasher kickoff back to the 25 yard line. So remember uh, this is uh, re kick number two now as uh, back to back offsides have forced uh, Matt Lasher to tee it up for the third time. And now Sean Bays and Tony Howard move up to the 10 and 15 yard line. See what kind of field position Kent State gets out of this, but Lasher drills that boot over the head of Howard and into the end zone. Matt Lasher says, I'm going to take this into my own hands, Coach Kamel. My hat is off to Matt Lasher. That is an excellent performance by a kicker. Obviously, he has the wind at his back, but there are kickers that don't take advantage of that. Frank Solich will get this straightened out on the sideline. That is atypical of a Frank Solich team. That's a lack of discipline on that kickoff team. One of the things after that happens the first time, you tell the people on the kickoff team, I, we know you want to get downfield, but watch the football and don't cross that line until the ball is kicked. All right, third possession now in this opening quarter for Julian Edelman. And this Kent State run game just cannot get going. Eugene Jarvis was uh, absolutely hemmed in, had nowhere to go. Plenty of white shirts there, uh, led by Jamison Hartke and Shane Yates. We're going to see the ball go on the ground here. But getting back to the Kent State offense, they are totally out of sync. They need to hand the football off. They need to run a toss. They need to run some running plays, establish things, get, get an identity within the game. This is an offensive football team that has uh, been so superb of late. Edelman's going to swing it out, and Eugene Jarvis can't hang on as that pass falls incomplete. And at uh, second and 16, they try to get Eugene Jarvis out in space where he can make some things happen. And again, you come up third and long now, and uh, this is uh, an area where uh, there has not been the kind of success. He take it from third and ten or more just uh, at nine percent for Julian Edelman in the Kent State offense. He's going to go on that quick count and run the football. Eugene Jarvis. Jarvis wants to try to get to the corner. He got back to the original line of scrimmage as uh, he was uh, belted down. Out of that secondary by uh, Stephen Jackson. The 180 pound freshman who wears number 42. And with a minute and 46 left in the quarter and this fourth down coming up Frank Solich is going to take a timeout to see maybe if again he can get wonderful field position as they did a moment ago before the touchdown after that uh, that uh, minus one punt from Kent State's Jake Kilroy. Well, I think this is a very prudent move on his part. You know, a little struggle early on a little bit with special teams. Get the special team on the sideline. Bring them over. Get organized. Talk a little bit about it. Stay on side. Don't rough the punter. We've got an opportunity here to have great field position yet again. The question is going to be right now, how will Kent State respond as a punting team to, to their first Aaron punt that basically, as you mentioned, Michael, was actually probably a minus yards. So this will give also give Kent State a little bit of a time to, you know, to talk things over and determine what they're going to do from an offensive side as far as protection goes. I want to remind all of you Mac football fans, the Mac online store is open for business. You can get your favorite school gear, Mid-American Conference logo apparel online from a source you trust, Mac-Sports.com. That's the way to do it, online store, left nav bar, and away you go. Mac-Sports.com slash store for the Mac online store. So Jake Kilroy will hit this from uh, somewhere around the eight nine yard line as he stands back at the six with Chris Garrett right at the midfield stripe. We saw Garrett three weeks ago go 88 yards to the house and Kilroy's got another one off the side of his foot as pressure was coming. That is a seven yard kick for Jake Kilroy and if Ohio can take advantage of this again how about Frank Solich getting that timeout saying 
I want to see if we could come up with the same type of field position we did a moment ago. I don't think there's any question. Kilroy was not under enough to rest to warrant that type of a kick. If the ball is a little slippery or if his shoe, what have you, he needs to get this corrected because this will come back time and again. There he is adjusting the ball in his hand with the snap. Drop just a bit low, yet again off the side of his foot. But there's not enough pressure there to warrant that type of, of a punt. You said the wind, it's gusting, it's breezing. The last possession started at the 17-yard line and went to the house. This one at the 28. Calvin McCray will break a couple of tackles. And McCray with a hard-fought couple of yards as uh, he beat the, uh, the initial tackle attempt from Colin Farrell. Jeff Phelps, I, told, I love that chapeau you're wearing, and I, I suggest you keep it firmly planted, young man. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be difficult, Michael, because that wind is all over the place today. When the game started, it was behind the backs of the Kent State offense. Then it shifted coming directly across the field. That really affected both of those puns along with the problems kicking the ball itself. And then a little bit later, it was right behind the backs of Ohio. So it's been every which way today. Yeah, appreciate that, Jeff. He grew up here in Northeast Ohio, went to Kent State. He knows Austin Everson to air it out. Well, that football's going to flutter, and it was picked off by Andre Kirkland. Kirkland on the INT for Kent State. Ohio went for that quick six, and in that breeze, it never had a chance. Kirkland on the Kent State interception. I mean, the, we're going to have a penalty here, though, however. Decline. First down, Kent State. Austin Everson threw this ball into double coverage. I like the secondary here of Kent State in that one. That ball is in the air. It is anybody's football. You now become the wide receiver, not the defensive back. Look at this young guy right there, Kirkland, on the run. Great play. That ball came out of Austin Everson's hand. It looked like a helicopter. Either it was the wind or his hands a little bit wet. And for Andre Kirkland, his third pick of the year. Now go back to the run game for Kent State. Doug Martin says, I'm going to ask those road graders, the heavy lifters on that offensive line, who've uh, as a group added 20 pounds collectively through their work in the weight room this year to try to get an offense going here late first quarter. Well, I'm all for that. You have to establish, they have to establish the identity. I mean, every offense has an identity, but then you have to establish that identity within the course of the game. And that carry from uh, Tony Howard's going to be the final play of this opening quarter. 15 minutes in the books. The weather, as we've seen in the first 15 minutes, it's already played cause and effect in this one. Ohio took advantage of the poor Kent State punt. They get the Von Kerry Owens touchdown. Now it's Kent State's turn to see if they can respond. Ohio's Bobcats with the early lead. It's in the books with Ohio on top of uh, Kent State at 7 0 again. Uh, can't tell you enough. It's a battle for first place in the MAC East. Bob, this is worth two games today. A Kent State win gives them two games in separation. We put them to 5 0. Ohio would be 3 2. Ohio wins it, both of them 4 and 1, and November is going to be a lot of fun atop the MAC East. Absolutely. You know, Michael, mid American football, I, I've said this time and again parody, parody. It's been the byword of this conference as far back as I can remember. All right, Julian Edelman now off play action. Edelman will keep the football. Tried to cut back and wiggled his way up to the 20-yard line as he was able to beat that tackle of Tyler Russ on that first play of the second quarter. So Edelman able to move the sticks. And now that is a Kent State first down. Well, they've been averaging per play up until uh, uh, Edelman here on that particular carry. Well, they actually started out at 2.1 yards and has regressed as the, as the quarter went on to 1.9 yards per play. Very, very atypical of this offense. That it is, but they do move the chains here. As the first two plays of the uh, this first play of the second quarter for Julian Edelman. Look out, set time from Ohio as that pressure came from Jamison Hartke, and he threw Edelman to the ground rather rudely for that nine-yard sack. Jason Hartke, 6'4", 259 pounds. That's a big young guy, but watch how athletic he is. You know, in I talk about pass rushing. We talk about one thing. You have to be a want to guy. You have to want to pass rush. You have to bring your legs. You have to play leverage. The coaches from Ohio, you say he is the most prolific pass rusher on the team. Jason Hart, Centerville, Ohio. As you said, Frank Solich loves what he's getting. That football's on the ground. Edelman's got to find a way to secure it inside the 10-yard line. 
as he uh, wanted to run that inside delay and uh, Edelman finally had to get back on the football and Kent State's offense sputtering here. Well there I, I believe the back really thought Edelman was going to detach in other words pull the football and run a counter play. One of the things I would do here if I were Kent State I would get Edelman up under center until I get things going because of the weather because of the rain and yes because of the wind even with the short snap. Kent State will go three wide have not got the football in the hands of Najee Pruden as yet on third and 21 run Eugene Jarvis on that isolation play Jarvis was hit by Landon Cohen and Kent State now is going to be forced to boot the football away in their third consecutive series of downs. Well make no mistake about it Michael you know well that in these these types of weather conditions field position is critically mm -hmm. important. Well, Jake Kilroy wonder what's going through his mind as he stands at the goal line hit one for minus one he just fumbled the football and it's free in the end zone picked up by Kent State kind of run it out of that end zone for the flashes after that football came free Kent State's Gary Ham that senior got on the football and got onto the end zone to avoid a real disaster uh, for the flashes after Kilroy bobbled it. Watch Kilroy take his eye off of the football. There is no reason. That snap is good enough. It is a good enough snap to be fielded and the ball be punted. This young man here, Ham, he saves the day. Talk about presence. Talk about awareness. My hat is off to him. This could have been a catastrophe. Gary Ham, who was a tailback in this program a year ago, switched to the defensive side of the football. And Bob, I think that punt returner, Chris Garrett, the true freshman, uh, took a uh, a hit maybe in the, I don't know if it was uh, the, the knee area, but he is up and off the field under his own power. But, oh, Jake Kilroy, uh, you hope the young man is able to turn this around, Bob, because you don't like to see anybody have this kind of day that started for the young man uh, Jake Kilroy the punter for Kent State. Well again you know we want punters at practice kickers at practice are off usually on their own. We're asking him to do one thing here one thing he needs to respond. There are ten other people making sure that he can get that punt off. Short field again for Austin Everson off that play fake. Everson to throw the square out and that is caught. Boy outstanding catch. As uh, the catch was made, uh, running that square out by Scotty Mail. Mail, who wears number 82, uh, has not put up the kind of numbers uh, that uh, he has in his first few years in Athens. 11 yard grab there. Again, you've heard me say this time and time again. You catch the football with your eyes. Mail never, ever lost focus, got his hands underneath the football. What a wonderful catch by this young guy from West Virginia. Now, out of the eye, first and goal from the six. Give the football to Calvin McCray, and he got stood up. Going tough for McCray. As that left side of the Kent State defensive front, Anthony Dugarte, Colin Farrell, Kevin Hogan there. As McCray battled out a tough couple down uh, inside the five. No question there, the Kent State front came up stout. And they have to do that time and again. You know, this is where, where I talk about leverage. Pad under pad. You have to be pad under pad. The lower man wins, especially down in this type of a situation. And there is no margin for error. You cannot be driven off the football. What a jumbo formation now for quarterback Austin Everson. Mitch Morcillo in front of Calvin McCray. Go right back to McCray. Trying to move that pile, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio. Outstanding offensive line play, relentless offensive line play. I mentioned Onion early on. I have to mention him again. The big guy comes off the football. Watch him. We've got a double team block. We've got a fullback. Everybody's moving. Everybody's moving their legs, and there is great leverage right here. And, and again, you know, a good back will turn his shoulders, as we saw there, and make himself smaller as he gets into the end zone. Matt Lasher to try to add that PAT, and he will do that. The 21st career touchdown for talented tailback Calvin McCray, number 10 on this season. Ohio early second with a 14 0 lead. 14 0 Ohio over Kent State. What a surprise. 
but watch the double team here. Watch this block here. Watch the push here. Watch the push there. And the lead back and single into the end zone. Watch it. Watch that double team. There it is. Watch the back turn his shoulders just as he finds the crease. That makes him just a little bit smaller and a little bit less of a target. I like it, Coach. Excellent breakdown. Great work, too, from uh, all of our, uh, our guys manning the cameras and uh, our two outstanding operators in the tape room, Mike Simons and Paul Ditchie, two of the best in the business. And breaking that all down with the, ho with the uh, help of uh, Coach Kamel up here in the booth. Good job, everybody. Ohio with his 14-0 lead now. Kent State going to get their hands on the football yet one more time. They need a burst. Sean Bales out over the 35 with a bit of that explosion and this is going to be with the exception of that first drive of the day the best operating position that Julian Edelman and Kent State will have. Special teams Jake Kilroy the young man from Millersburg Ohio has uh, had a nightmare here in the first half. My goodness that that ball needs to be fielded. Young Mr. Ham right there though I give him a lot of credit. Great presence, great focus on the situation. Back live, that first call on this Kent State possession to Eugene Jarvis. Jarvis, the uh, redshirt freshman, and uh, he was hit as uh, that tackle was was made, uh, as you see, by uh, Connor Riley, the redshirt freshman of Ohio. And there's uh, Jake Kilroy. As uh, he's hoping, he's saying, come on, offense, take this football uh, into the end zone, go on a drive so we don't have to punt it right now. As, there's those last three drives. He's the loneliest guy in the state of Ohio right now. On second and 11, this is Julian Edelman. Edelman, the talented quarterback, has come free, and he's got a Kent State first down. Edelman weaving his way through traffic. And he's got the Kent State first down uh, out near the midfield stripe. 13 yards for Julian Edelman. Well, you're going to see right here is he detaches the football. Watch 65. Bama, look at that. He engulfs that defensive back. Joe Marifon. Oh, my goodness. Perfectly legal. Now stay on the ground. Eugene Jarvis has come through a seam into the second level. Give Jarvis 13. And that's a first down for Kent State. Jarvis had a huge afternoon here against the, uh, the Toledo Rockets. But, Bob, how much, as coach, how much do you uh, put into cause and effect from that bye week, having not played in 14 days? And Doug Martin was worried about it, as he told us yesterday. Excellent point, Michael. You can never emulate the speed of the game in practice. Try as you may. Perhaps that's what's coming, coming down with Kent State right now. They're starting to get into the feel of the speed of the game. Eugene Jarvis has got the corner and a positive first down carry as give Jarvis five before he was uh, shoved out of bounds. Let's go down to Jeff Phelps. Doug Martin talked about patience and yet team accountability, Jeff, uh, in the preseason and last spring. How did he get that accomplished? Well, it's, a, it's an awful day today, right, Michael? This yep. is nothing compared to weather in Northeast Ohio in February. You see the beautiful field house over here? Kent had its spring practices in February. Rather than going inside the field house, they went outside in the snow, all 15 practices. Doug said it built up the team's toughness, no question about that. Julian Edelman has come free. This is the young man from California showing those quick legs inside the five. Edelman to the pylon, and did he get in? What a phenomenal run with the football for Edelman. He stepped out at the three-yard line, 34 yards, weaving his way through traffic of Ohio Bobcat defenders. I am not embellishing this. This is one of the finest efforts I have seen in college football this year. He said, hey, I'm going to take the game into my hands. I mean, he comes down there like a big old fullback and tries to lean into the end zone. Now Edelman, as uh, referee Alex Kemp, is going to stop that as uh, Kent State tried to get to that line of scrimmage quick and go on that quick count. Uh, the previous play is going to be under review, and uh, what will be in question here, watch the right foot of Julian Edelman. Did he step out of bounds right there? I think he did. I truly believe he did. I think he's out of bounds right there. I in any event, I mean in any event, this young guy said enough. Enough. I'm going to lead this football team. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Remember one thing as a defensive coordinator. You cannot script. You can script every play the other team runs, and you can learn how to defend it in practice. You cannot script a broken play. And that's why everybody is recruiting 
athletic quarterbacks. They can make things happen when the team is under duress. Right there. That's where he steps out of bounds. I think he's out of bounds right there, and I think the ball will come back to the 11-yard line. Well, once again, kudos to our uh, our Mac production team. That is a tremendous look from up top. All the guys behind the lenses today are uh, they're bundled up, Bob, and they're battling all the adverse weather conditions and and showing you looks like that as uh, it's under review with uh, referee Alex Kemp. But be that as it may, what, what an, uh, just a phenomenal, uh, uh, scintillating run that got everybody on their feet here from Julian Edelman, the California kid. Well, what it does, too, it gives the entire team a lift. You see a young guy, you know, talk about Edelman, okay? The respect he has for his offensive linemen. They all got these mohawk haircuts. <laughs> he said, hey, uh, I'm one of you guys. I'm yeah. going to get one, too. There's a lot of quarterbacks that are walking around with mohawk haircuts. Uh, no, uh, yeah. let's listen to After Alex Kemp. You, the ball carrier steps bounds on the 11-yard line. It will be Kent State's ball, first and 10, at the 11-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 9 minutes and 8 seconds. 9.08. Thank you. Coming back here, Michael, the first play, I believe this, will be an option play with Edelman. I think it would be a great, great call by Doug Martin. The Ohio defense uh, gets a little bit of room to take their backs off uh, that goal line. But Kent State still in uh, now tremendous operating position with their second trip to the red zone and a need to put something on the board here to uh, maybe wipe this bad taste out of their mouth in the first uh, 20 minutes and some change of football that's been all Ohio. Well, you know, we're talking to Doug Martin. He cannot say enough about Julian Edelman. The way he's come here, the making the move, the transition, the maturation into being a Division I-A quarterback, he's done it all. And he has become a leader, and he has become a rallying point for the football team on the field as well as off the, off the field. Yeah, he has. Kent State can get a first down at the one, trying to uh, get that football to the tailback, Eugene Jarvis, who got a couple before uh, he was taken down. Well, what Kent State has tried to do is uh, get into the uh, that rarefied air that this program hasn't been in 34 years when Don James was the head coach. How about those names? Uh, Larry Poole, Greg Kokel, the quarterback, Gary Pinkle, tight end, Jack Lambert, Nick Saban, a defensive back on this football team. And, of course, Lambert was a player of the year. Don James called Doug Martin this week to tell him what a terrific job he's done in revitalizing Kent State. Play action for Edelman. Look at Enzo. Sitko. He's got it. Touchdown, Kent State. Tom Sitko, the 250-pound junior, at the back of the end zone, hauls in the eight-yard touchdown pass from Julian Edelman, who had to put superb touch on that at the back of the zone. Here's what makes this play. He sells the fake. He comes out to the opposite side. Good vision. Good vision and good touch on the football. He, he, what he basically did was say, said, Sitko, here's a jump ball. You go up and get it. Great throw. Julian Edelman with his eighth touchdown uh, connection of the year. That's Reed Macko to add the PAT. And Kent State feeling much, much better about things. And it all came from the legs and now the arm of Julian Edelman. Wonderful concentration, Tom Sitko. 14-7 now here as we approach the midway point of uh, quarter number two. Tom Sitko a moment ago, the, uh, the young man from around the Cleveland area. South Euclid, and there's Sitko, first career touchdown. Jeff Phelps, uh, how about the uh, physical condition of freshman Chris Garrett of Ohio? Chris told me, Michael, that he was kicked in the right calf when he was helped off the field the last time. He went right to the heater. He stood there. He's walking around fine, but he's not in there right now to return this kick. Top punt returner in uh, all of college football, the true freshman Chris Garrett that has been so electrifying this year. Uh, Scott Mayo. Uh, back at that deep return spot along with Josh Abrams. And that kick is going to come up real short and be fair caught. As Ohio will start right there as uh, Irvin Jackson. That, uh, that freshman safety on the special teams making the uh, the fair catch. And you could do that, Coach Kamel. How do you like that? Eh? Just make sure you get the football secured and uh, not take any chances with that punt that, or that kick, rather, that's hung up short. I think it's a good idea. I think it shows a lot of maturity for a young guy. Feel that football, call for the fair catch, get the football there, don't take chances, 
putting the ball in jeopardy. The ball is wet. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a good call. Good special teams work right there. Saw the strong scoring drive of Kent State a moment ago. Julian Edelman doing it with his uh, legs and then with the arms. So now has momentum swung a little bit here. As we come inside eight minutes in the second quarter, we're going to find out as Austin Everson, quick drop, guns that slant through the hands incomplete of Scott Mayle as uh, Mayle was in coverage from Usama Young. We absolutely love this veteran experience secondary of this Kent State ball club. Oh, they do a great job. They get a great break on the football. No unnecessary steps. You talk about driving on the ball, that's when you start to get into your back pedal and single. Now you come up and make the play. Not on the line here in the Mac East at Dick Stadium today, along with Bob Kamel and Jeff Phelps. I'm Michael Regak. Great to have you with us. He's got the good one going on. We expect it with Ohio holding this. Touchdown lead at 14-7. Second and 10 now for senior quarterback Austin Everson from Tennessee. Going to run the football, and Kelvin McCray is in open space. McCray broke a tackle out near the midfield stripe for Kelvin McCray as he just rumbled for 26 yards in that Ohio first down. Eighth career rushing-wise in the Ohio uh, books as far as backs go. McCray again showing his strong moves. Well, great job by the offensive line of Ohio. But remember this, Colin Farrell had great, great penetration. The defensive lineman from Kent State, which forced the young man to redirect the play. That's why it was an impressive run. He readjusted actually in the backfield. Most averaging seven to tote now is Calvin McCray. That good for 26 yards in the Ohio first down is Everson. Now to work out of the shotgun with three wide receivers. Austin Everson on the keep. And it can't stay territory and still alive is Austin Everson. As he was able to work his way to the 45 yard line. How big is it when you come up second and three, second and four after those positive six and seven yard first down plays? Makes an offensive coordinator's job a lot easier. One of the things right here, as you see this block and that other block, those blocks cannot be thrown. All you want those wide receivers and option football to do is front up the defender and let the running back or the quarterback make the cutoff of their block. Everson gets set. Call it second down and three with the eye behind them. Calvin McCray on the carry. Not this time. McCray got swarmed. Taken down by Kevin Hogan. Was there to meet him first. The motor of Kevin Hogan is absolutely phenomenal. He weighs 210 pounds. Doug Martin flat out told us he cannot be blocked, and they go ones on ones. Well, there's one, two ways to beat a block. One's by quickness, and one, one is by power. Kevin Hogan does it by quickness. 6'3", 210 pound freshman from Chagrin, Ohio. An outstanding, comes from an outstanding football program, knows how to play the game, and as you mentioned, Michael, he has a great motor. Hogan on that hit, let's call it third and four now. With motion from Chidu Nwoka. Swing it out to McCray. McCray looking for that first down as he'll spin inside the 40-yard line. And if that's marked around the 40, that is a Calvin McCray first down. Excellent touch from Austin Everson as they went to that screen pass to McCray to move the chains. Michael, this is basically the same thing as taking the football and pitching it. It's like an extended pitch or an extended handoff. Tim Albin, the fine running back coach from Ohio U, calls Calvin McCray the total package. He blocks and he's improving on his blocking, catching the ball out of the backfield. Nice play by that young man. Very smart drive that Ohio is putting together after Kent State got on the board. Speed option left, Everson. McCray got ushered out of bounds at uh, right around the line of scrimmage at the 40-yard uh, the line. Uh, excellent uh, defensive play from Colin Farrell. Oh, Farrell gets off blocks well, doesn't he, Coach? There's no doubt about it, and that's a real technique. That's something that you practice day in and day out. Getting to the blocks of the wide receivers and option football. It's called a stalk block. In other words, you're going to come out and attack the outside number of the defender. You're going to stay in a football position with your shoulders square and basically slide left or right. You're not going to throw and try to take the defender down because he can pop up and make the play. Football education, courtesy of Bob Cabell. Stalk blocks. Put that down in your offensive dictionary. Now Everson wants to air it out deep, and he had too much air under that football as uh, he was going deep to the end zone. Separation was uh, was there for uh, Everson with his uh, wide receiver, Chidu Noakocha. Noakocha had a uh, 
a big game against Buffalo last week. Did it uh, on a reverse as well as his pass catching exploits. When you see Austin Everson here, he's going to start into a, into an option phase as he starts to come down. Excuse me, I apologize. As he starts to come down, then he comes back, single, throws the ball downfield. There is nothing that has more draw than option football in play action. That pass should have been completed, however. All right, third and ten now. Three wide receivers with Calvin McCray offset. Everson wants to go through the air. Plenty of time. In route. And threw it a little bit too low for William Norwood on that deep square end. But we've got a flag that was thrown uh, here on this near sideline by the line judge. Illegal participation, uh, Coach Kamel, for the the Ohio Bobcats and head coach Frank Solich. Ineligible man downfield. Offense, number 88. That penalty is declined. Brings it up, fourth down. Well, if Rudy Sylvan's ineligible, they had him covered up then on that he line must of scrimmage? Covered. He must You have to be, if you're a tight end, you have to be the last man on the line of scrimmage. If someone was to his outside flank on the line of scrimmage, he cannot covered go downfield. If he's a yard off the football, the wide receiver, Sylvan, can go downfield. So Ohio's going to have to boot it away as uh, Kent State declining that. Matt Lasher will hit it from about the midfield stripe. John Drager wears number 22, calling for that fair catch at the 13-yard line. So a long field, 87 yards worth for Julian Edelman and the Kent State offense. They went to the house a moment ago to get on the board for the first time today. We'll see what Kent State offense has in store in a moment. State averages almost 19 yards of reception in his career. The senior out of Burlington, New Jersey. There you see second in the uh, the Kent State receiving books in both yards gained and in touchdowns. And yet, Bob, uh, today, they haven't been able to get the football in his hands, and he is an electrifying game breaker. Well, the pass rush and secondary coverage complement each other. You can't have one without the other and be an outstanding pass defensive team. Well, let's see. Maybe if this possession changes things. Kent State's got a, got a spark offensively. That uh, Julian Edelman led touchdown drive. The series starts at the 14 yard line. Run tailback Tony Howard. Howard trying to get out in space on that, uh, that edge of the, uh, the football field and got taken down after a short gain. As, uh, that's Mark Parson who came up from the cornerback spot to make the hit with Michael Mitchell, who wears number 34, that free safety. Great analysis there by Parson as far as the play goes. And he was unaccounted for. In other words, you know, six and five, six guys to one side of the field, five guys to the other side of the field. It's up to the quarterback to get him into a play where they can get a man on a man. Parson was unaccounted for, came up, made a wonderful play. So give Tony Howard a couple. Second down and eight. Go right back to Howard. Trying to sift his way through the wash in the middle of that Ohio defense as uh, Michael Graham, 212 pound senior, came up and made the first hit. Interesting story is Tony Howard started his collegiate football career in East Lansing, Michigan. Michigan State, young man that grew up right here in the uh, Cleveland area. Garfield Heights High School decided to come back home and play for the Golden Flashes. I think it was, it was an excellent uh, decision on his part. He's doing so well here. Recognition, academically, everything. I, you know, sometimes that happens. A transfer's a good deal a lot of times. Big play here, Coach Camille. Third and four for Julian Edelman. Edelman with heat. Edelman trying to use his legs and get to those sticks. He's got a first down and more. Julian Edelman is free in open space into Ohio territory down to the 48-yard line. The young man from San Mateo, California, electrifying everybody here at Dick Stadium. What an athletic young man. What an effort. I mean, he continues to surprise. And remember, from a defensive standpoint, you cannot diagram against a broken play. Look at the shake. Look at the strength. Well, he came into today with over 500 yards of uh, running uh, on the ground. Uh, yards gained. You see and why today as he's making things happen. Go back to the more conventional run game there with Tony Howard on that first down call uh, for a gain of a couple. You know, football is sequential. And I can see Doug Martin calling plays in sequence. We hand off to Martin. Now we come back and we fake to Martin and bring the football out onto the perimeter with Julian Edelman and give him a run pass option. Mm -hmm. Bootleg passes with this young guy could really wreak havoc on the Bobcat defense. 
Uh, Doug Martin, of course, who uh, had Josh Cribbs uh, now with the Cleveland Browns as his quarterback when he came in as the old coordinator here. Off the play fake. Edelman in trouble here. Trying to get out of tackles again. Keeping the play alive and doing the smart thing by throwing it out of bounds. There are some uh, very bewildered Ohio front four defensively. Sean Yates landed Cohen, so wait a minute, we had Edelman. Well, that was going to be a boot pass. There, there is no doubt about it, but when Jason Hartke got, excuse me, Jamison Hartke got up in his face, he had to adjust. Come back to the football. Come back to the football. Keep coming back to the football. You see wide receivers, any wide receiver, when the quarterback is under duress, you mirror the quarterback. You slide in the direction he's going. Then when he gets ready to throw the football, you break back toward him to cause separation from the defender. A third and eight for Julian Edelman. They've only been one for five now. The Kent State offense on third down. Four wide for Edelman. That throw is uh, going to be way too tall uh, for tight end Brian Bell. And a fall incomplete, which is going to bring up a fourth down and eight. And a decision now for uh, head coach uh, Doug Martin of Kent State. He said now in his third year in this program went five and six and oh four and uh, Doug Martin is saying offense let's go move the chain so Doug Martin here with the football at the 45 yard line evidently lining up to try to pick this first down up. This is a very interesting call by the, the, the part of Doug Martin. He's had great confidence in Julian Edelman. Not only to, to make the play but initially to get him into the right play. At the line to make down at the 37 yard line, but Edelman is going to try to boot it away and he had it blocked. It was blocked by Jamison Hartke into the hands of Landon Cohen. So Edelman out of the shotgun was uh, looking to boot it away to try to change field position on fourth and eight, but I think Jamison Hartke got a hand on it. And uh, Ohio now with strong operating position. Yeah, that was Hartke who came. He almost took it right off the foot of Edelman. Uh, known as a pro prolific pass rusher. But at the same time, this young man, I mean, you talk about great presence and you talk about great maturity. That's Jamison Hartke right there. I mean, you, you come through the heels depth of the offensive lineman, you usually break down. He sees it's going to be a quick kick. He continues to come and blocks it. Great defensive play by this young guy. Centerville, Ohio. Hey, this is look at look at that clock now. That has started with a inside two minutes left now in the first half, but we're gonna have to check that. Uh, we're showing a little bit different here. Speed option right, Austin Everson. Everson's got the corner. And Everson very close to a first down for Ohio. He ran that speed option right and got a couple of good blocks. Uh, that uh, took him up that far sideline. Well, we've seen this team play before, and you know how I feel about Mitch Marcillo. Mitch Marcillo, the fullback, number 39 on that play. This young guy is one of the most unselfish running backs that I have seen. He is an outstanding blocker. Most running backs don't want to do that an awful lot. Marcillo or Marcillo does a great job with it. How big could this be now? Ohio with a seven-point lead in the football. There's Bob Camell's guy, that 246-pound redshirt freshman, Mitch Morsillo, on that quick trap. Morsillo uh, to move the sticks now. First down, Ohio, down inside the 35-yard line. Let's check in with Jeff Phelps real quickly. Jeffrey. Little little problem for the Bobcat defense, Michael. Todd Koenig, starting strong safety, injured his ankle in the first quarter. He told me nothing's broken, but they think it's a sprain. He's on crutches, done for the game. Yeah, that'll hurt because, uh, Jeff, he has been a very dynamic force in that secondary uh, for Frank Solich. On that option pitch, this is Calvin McCray, and he's got plenty of real estate up this near sideline. First down and more down to the 22-yard line. 13-yard rumble for Calvin McCray. And Bob Camell, if, if Ohio can get in here, how this could change momentum and the complexion of this one. I mean, this, again, I can't say enough about this fullback, Marcelo. Watch the block. Here we go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Bammo. I mean, he decleats that corner. That makes that play get upfield. I like this guy. You know I do. And I, it, it's fun to watch a fullback play that way. Both teams running the football well. This is Austin Everson who got a block from J.J. Nab, And Everson's inside the 10-yard line. Down to the eight is that center, J.J. Nab threw a tremendous block out on the corner to Spring Everson. You don't see a lot of centers being pulled. Mostly it's guards and tackles. This speaks to his athleticism. This is a big guy who's blocking in open space. 
He comes right out there and cuts the defender. My goodness, that was a, an excellent block. You talk about team offense. There he goes again. Team offense. That's how you play this game. First a goal from the seven-yard line. Kent State's defense needs to be stout. They got it there on the first play as they put down Calvin McCray right at the line of scrimmage. No gain McCray there as you see that clock running with 80 ticks left here in the first half. Well, great penetration here by, by Colin Farrell forcing the back to redirect his path. Every back on every play has a path that he takes. When there's penetration, he has to redirect. This gives the linebackers time to step up and clean house. Two timeouts left for Frank Solich. Everson going to come out in the flat, and he left that short, or did he? He completed the throw to Jason White, evidently. White with an outstanding grab as he picked it off his shoe tops. Well, the one thing he did there, he's got his hands up underneath the football. You know, wide receivers, young wide receivers, below the waist, palms up. Above the waist, palms out. Good fundamental catch, good focus. Uh, Frank Solich is going to use one of those two Their timeouts second. that I just mentioned. The previous play is under review. That, we're going to review that because, as I said, I, I don't, from the naked eye, Bob, I thought that uh, that throw short hopped uh, the backup fullback, Jason White, but that's what Alex Kemp will come over to find out. Bit of an under, underthrown pass. He had an opportunity there to throw that ball on the run and complete it on the run to the uh, running back. Let's see what happens here. He squares his shoulders up. He got some air under the, well, Michael, like a I short hop to me. Well, no? let's, let's take a look at this angle. I think, think it it is a yeah, that ball's on the ground. Ball is on the ground. Actually, you can see some of the some of the moisture from the field kind of pop up. Watch it right here. Oh, I I, I think that's a short hop ball. I think so. I, in the last uh, look that we had, it looked like some of the, the rainwater, the moisture, kind of popped up as the ball skid. I'll give Jason White this if he wants a future potentially as a major league shortstop. He's got the very, very good hands for being able to go in the hole. He showed him there because I think that was on the short hop. But we'll see. I mean, he does a nice job of, you know, continuing to act as though he has the football. This is going to be another look. This big offensive or tight end is going to be I, I look to me like right there it was short hop. As by the way, he's picking the football up by the end of the football. Yeah, from that look, you know, Rudy Sylvan, that 275-pound tight end for Ohio, he kind of blocks out the sun if there was any today. But uh, you know, all the moon and the stars too. He casts a giant shadow. He does. <laughs> all right, our replay rules under official review. Uh, coach uh, gets a challenge uh, per team per game. Uh, you got to call a timeout to inform the referee of your challenge. If your call is reversed in your favor, you get your timeout back, and it's got to be that indisputable video evidence. Just remember everything that uh, the, the, the sidelines, the goal line, the back of the end zone, all of that is any boundary or a line of distinction in the football field can be reviewed. Of all that we've seen this year, Michael, I think this may be the most difficult decision as far as what we see with the football. After review, the play stands is called on the field. Third down. Indisputable. All right. Indisputable video evidence. Indisputable. And uh, it looked to me like, uh, you know, maybe there was a, a couple of looks that would dispute that. However, uh, Alex Kemp and uh, those uh, that review up here in the, uh, the booth say that uh, you can't overturn that. The play was called as a completion on the field. It'll stand. Now, albeit it was for a one-yard game. So uh, it's still going to bring up third down and goal from the six yard line to reset. There are 49 seconds, 47 seconds by our clock here left in the, uh, the first half. And now this is bringing up the third down and goal from the six yard line for Austin Everson. I think we'll see young Mr. Everson here in a little bit of a speed option situation as they spread the field. He's going with four wide receivers. They are charged their second time out. And Calvin McCray is in this four wide receiver look. Well, four wide, third and six. Quarterback draw maybe for Everson. Let's see. McCray will come back and join him and go motion. And a toss sweep. McCray inside the five into the end zone. Touchdown. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. A flag is down. Beautifully designed play with the option pitch to McCray out of motion, but it's not going to stay on the board. I think what we're going to see here is going to be the receiver uh, 
basically number 17, okay? Holding. See his Offense. hands outside the framework of the body. penalty from the spot of the foul. Third down. When, when a young wide receiver, wide receiver goes downfield, if your hands are inside, inside, basically in the chest area of the defender, you're never going to get called. When your hands get outside the framework of the body, in other words, you're grabbing, and you're going to see on this play right here, his hands are outside the framework of the body. Consequently, you get the holding call. I like the call. I like the call here. Watch his hands right there. Right there is what you see, and that's why it's holding. If his hands were inside, there would not be a problem. Watch the shot McCray took airborne. Bang! Right there from Fritz Jacquez, that hard-hitting safety. And Calvin, as you see, maybe a little bit winded. But that touchdown from McCray would have been his second of the day has come off the board. Third and goal now from the 13-yard line. Again, four wide for Austin Everson. Everson had his pass deflected, and it fell incomplete. And to pick it up and take it the other way uh, for Kent State uh, to no avail is Usama Young. Danny Muir got a hand on that, and that's going to bring up a fourth and goal now. Back at the 14-yard uh, line, and that is going to get uh, the very talented Matt Lasher on the football field. And with five seconds left two weeks ago, as night fell in Champaign, Illinois, Matt Lasher went on the football field. Bang, straight and true, instant They're win first. for Ohio over Illinois. Well, it was not only a great win for Ohio, it was a great win for the Mid-American Conference. Anytime you go into a, the home of a Big Ten team and come out with a victory. But I will tell you this, I will say this, Michael, I've said it time and again. There are many teams within this MAC conference that would compete week in and week out oh, yeah. with Big Ten football teams. I have no doubt in my mind. We've seen that uh, during the course of, say, the last uh, close to two decades now. As uh, we let you know for the latest in all of MAC football news, no stats, plus anything going on athletically in the Mid American Conference, and all MAC's live video streaming, visit the MAC's website at www.mac-sports.com. Why are you here today and so riveted with us? We can't emphasize enough. First place is at stake. Would I call it the penthouse of the MAC East, where everybody aspires to be? Kent State on this 4-0 uh, MAC start for the first time in their history, but you know what, Frank Solich and his football team, they said they've got to get strong. Remember last year, Solich yes. said, we need to get stronger and tougher to be able to sustain in the fourth quarter. I'd say they've done that. I, I don't think there's any question. And Frank Solich has been around some of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the country. Guys that were forerunners to the different types of techniques that you use. He knows how to do it. I, I, you know, again, we, we've seen so many great coaches in the Mid-American Conference. Frank Solich will take his place among them as, as time progresses, at, you know, as will Doug Martin. These are two well-coached football teams. All right, so this is going to be a 30-yard field goal attempt for the right hash mark. Strong and uh, usually accurate leg of uh, six-foot, 190-pound senior Matt Lasher out of the hole of Austin Everson. Lion sensor that long snapper. Plenty of leg from uh, Matt Lasher as he drills that through the uprights and tack on three for the Ohio Bobcats to give them a 10-point advantage and maybe take away a little bit of the momentum, Bob, that Kent State had built up after the touchdown and after they went on that drive that was short-circuited. The three points are obviously very critical in this situation with this close of a football game. But with 35 seconds left on the clock, even more critical from a psychological standpoint as you go into the locker room. Now it'll be critically important for the kickoff team to come up big here, make a stop, play good defense, Go, in, go into the in, into the locker room, 17-7 at the half. I, I, I like uh, Frank Solich's call. I like this kid last year. I think it's, uh, again, as I mentioned, from a psychological standpoint, very, very important. Yeah, what's coming up uh, next week, Kent State? they got a couple on the road now. They've got to go to Buffalo and uh, see the Bulls. And then they'll step out of conference and go see Frank Beamer and the Hokies of Virginia Tech for Frank Solich in Ohio. Well, they go to Eastern Michigan next week as, uh, you know, they uh, – they stay on the road, and uh, we shall see if, uh, you know, this two-game road trip, and another thing Frank Solich talked about, you know, I like taking my football team on the road. And 
build some character late in the season when you're chasing a championship. Sean Bales having problems getting on that football on that return for Kent State. They'll finally uh, get it corral Eugene Jarvis, and uh, he is protecting the goal line. So with everybody in tight, Edelman to take a knee, and that will be the final snap of this first 30 minutes of football. Kent State. They've never won five in a row in uh, Mid-American Conference play to uh, start a season. And we'll see in the MAC if they're able to uh, regroup here as Ohio and Frank Solich have come out and used a couple of, uh, well, short fields off special teams mistakes for Kent State to build a 14-0 lead. They'll take the 10-point advantage, Will Ohio, 17-7 into the break at halftime. And again, an Ohio win will give us a... First place stalemate atop the MAC East. Let's check in with Jeff Phelps as he's joined by Frank Solich. All righty, Michael, thank you very much. Coach Kent State made some mistakes. You guys took advantage of them. Didn't make many mistakes of your own. What went well for you in the first half? How pleased are you? Well, fairly pleased in that we got 17 points on the game uh, on the board. Um, it's obvious that we need to continue to, to keep the running game going. If, if we get stalled off there, you're in trouble on a day like today. I think both teams utilize the run very effectively. They did through their quarterback and scrambling a lot. We got to just make some tackles there. And uh, we, we did through some different types of uh, formations and, and, and running plays. But uh, all in all, this kind of weather, we'll, we'll take what happened the first half. Even with the scrambling by the Kent State quarterback that you mentioned, your defense has done a very nice job shutting down a good offense. Well, they, they've, they've done a good job of shutting the offense down, although that one drive was a long drive, and we, we, we can't let that happen. Frank, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Jim. Frank Solich up 17-7 to at halftime, guys. He's from Cleveland. A bunch of his coaches are from Northeast Ohio. They requested 80 tickets for this game, more than they have requested for any game so far this year. They're putting on a good show for their family and friends up 17-7. to Kent State coming into this game 4-0 in the MAC East. Ohio 3-1 in second place. And right now, Bobcats on top by 10. 17-7 is the score here at Dick Stadium. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Phelps. Welcome to halftime here at Kent State. Coming into this game, Ohio's running game had really picked up. In the first five games, the Bobcats averaged just 66 yards a game rushing. That was ranked 114th out of 119 Division I programs. Since then, they've won three straight games. Big reason why? The running game. Over the last three games, they've averaged over 200 yards a game rushing the football. And one of the big reasons why, the guy who wears number five, Calvin McCray. Looking back, maybe Calvin McCray is better off for what he went through in the summer of 2003. It was hard, you know, because this is my first year in so many years of being away from the game. Signed to a letter of intent out of Avondale High School in Atlanta, McCray brought his Georgia draw to Ohio University for preseason camp in late July 2003, only to be told a few days later that he had to return home because he had not gained final eligibility approval from the NCAA Clearinghouse. I remember sitting at home and watching Georgia Tech play and watching Reggie Ball start as a true freshman and me and Reggie graduated the same year out of the same county in Georgia and DeKalb County. And it was just hard watching him and Craig Lumpkin also just watch those guys play and knowing that I could have had that opportunity. To get back on the football field, Calvin first had to return to the classroom and improve his SAT score. Doing so meant juggling a testing opportunity with a family funeral, but that moment of sadness may have provided just what was needed to get Calvin McRae into college. My great aunt had just passed away. I told myself if I didn't make it this time, I, I, I really didn't want to take it again. You know, and I, for some reason, I feel deep down she was with me when I went there and took it because and, you know, God blessed me with getting the score, and I was able to start school. Enrolling in the spring quarter of 2004, McCray was able to participate in the last two weeks of spring practice. The following fall, he burst onto the scene, running for 100 yards in his Bobcat debut and leading the team in rushing as a freshman. His sophomore season proved to be a breakout year as McCray compiled the third best rushing total in Ohio University history. And now, the unassuming McCray wants his experience to serve as a lesson for those who have similar dreams. I try to tell all the high school players, like when I go back home, or if I talk to any of my old coaches, and they tell me they have talent on their team, but they just won't do the right thing in the classroom, I try to stress them the importance of being a student athlete. I'm Derek Scott, reporter. Late in the half, Calvin McRae made it into the end zone, called back because of a holding penalty. He was dinged up on that play. Calvin said he's fine, and he'll be playing in the second half. His team up 17-7. Up here in Dick Stadium today as uh, these Kent State fans and the Ohio fans who've made the trip from uh, down in uh, the uh, 
southeast part of the Buckeye State and watch the first half that's been weather affected. Ohio has the uh, 10 point advantage. Doug Martin, Bob Kamel just talked about tempo, pace offensively. We'll find out quick because Kent State will get their hands on the football as we take a look at the, the quarterbacks as we set them up today. Multitasking guys, guys that can run an offense in a couple of different ways. I really enjoy this type of quarterback play. I enjoy both of these offenses. I mean, they are so diverse and so well executed. All right, Kent State to get it as uh, we begin uh, quarter number three, and this is going to be Sean Bales from the five-yard line for Kent State. Bales trying to put a move on and uh, wasn't able to shake free of that special teams hit from a Mona Maxwell, the senior wide receiver. Now, there's your quarterbacks today, and we knew that Austin Everson and Justin Edelman would uh, use the legs as well as the arm. Well, I, I think, again, Michael, this is indicative of both coaches coming out here, checking the weather conditions, and knowing it's going to be difficult to throw the football. As I mentioned early in the game, this wind has changed direction uh, at least two or three times and then back again. That's why you run the football on days like today. All right, first possession of this third quarter for Julian Edelman, the sophomore junior college transfer. Oh, did that get blown up? Look at the defensive play from Landon Cohen. He was right there to greet Eugene Jarvis as Edelman gave him the handoff. Great, great pursuit. Pad on pad, you heard it, huh? Oh, there's just another frame for the highlight film, the defensive highlight film for the Bobcats. Landon Cohen, 6'3", 278-pound athlete. The coaches say he plays inside, but he plays like a defensive end. Loss of six as Landon Cohen has laid the wood to Eugene Jarvis. Edelman looking to put it up in trouble. And Edelman trying to wiggle free from that Jamison Hartke tackle. Edelman still alive. Julian Edelman, first down, and more. Wow, what an amazing sophomore quarterback this young man is. is two or three times today, he has been virtually all but uh, laid to waste by this Ohio defense and finds a way like Houdini, Bob, to get out of pressure. I mean, he is determined. He is all but brought down here. His knee never goes down. He spins, but watch his legs. Watch his legs. Watch his legs. They continue to move. Watch big number 66 take two guys out on that play. My goodness, McGraw, nice effort of getting downfield. Edelman still alive on the play. Mm. I mean, yeah, I, and the whole deal comes, you talk about guys got great feet. What does that mean when a guy's got great feet? That means that his feet continue to move in a very staccato, you know, they call it fast twitch. Well, we'll call it what you like. He never stops his feet. He never stops his legs from churning. You work on that at practice, but a lot of that is pure natural ability. Well, not a good sign, though, no, for uh, Kent State. Uh, one of their leaders on that offensive line, but Craig Rafdahl, the 305-pound senior, being helped off the field. So we'll have Jeff Phelps keep an eye on him. But Sunshine, I'm trying to provide some. The nickname for Julian Edelman, the record-setting junior college quarterback at San Mateo JC in the one year he played there in 05. Now swing it out, right side. This is Eugene Jarvis. Jarvis looking to put a move on. He was trying to shake free from the uh, the hit from uh, Irvin Jackson, and Jackson took him down. But Edelman uh, swinging it out to his tailback, UG Jarvis. Well, he loaded the formation to the field. In other words, they had more receivers to the left side of the field than the right side of the field to create a defense that would go to that side of the field and then to swing the ball to the opposite side, opposite side and basically ask Eugene Jarvis to make the play on his own. Got Kent State four, so let's call it second and six on this first drive of the third quarter. And uh, there is movement from uh, the sophomore, Gus Parrish. Number 56, five-yard penalty, second down. So Gus Parrish, the 315-pound uh, sophomore left tackle with that uh, premature movement. It'll cost Kent State five. We talked about these heavy lifters on that offensive line. They just lost Craig Rafto. But this offensive line averaged 286 pounds a man a year ago. 306 today as they threw around plenty of iron in the offseason. They get stronger as a unit. Edelman, then a lofted middle. 
as he was looking for Najee Pruden and that's the first time that uh, Edelman has looked for one of the most talented receivers in the nation Najee Pruden we said he's second on uh, just about every uh, Kent State pass receiving chart in the history of this program as you say excellent excellent that could have actually been offensive pass holding or offensive interference when he reached out and grabbed the shirt but at the same time T.J. Wright great great coverage you know and, and, but they complement each other they've had a good pass rush they've had good coverage in the secondary you have a combination of both of those things you're going to play great pass defense it's pretty much been T.J. Wright on Najee Pruden today well, the other corner Mark Parsons third and 11 Edelman they're going to come middle it's complete to Brian Bell, the uh, the backup tight end, but that's going to be well short. Line to make up at the 47-yard line. Going to bring up a fourth down and five after the catch by Brian Bell. And Kent State's got to boot it away. And we notice it will not be Jake Kilroy, the true freshman. It's going to be Nate Reed. Nate Reed who wears number 98 to take over for Jake Kilroy, who had extreme problems in the punting game. And Reed hammers, driving Chris Garrett back to the three-yard line. And that football came down at the one. Did Kent State keep it from crossing that goal line? Michael, that ball will be spotted on the one-yard line. Nate Reed. I mean, this is like a, a reliever coming in off the bench and being expected to do great work. Wow, we that stayed in, that stayed on the field. 57 yard boot for Nate Reed, who checked in to uh, punt that football away. And it was down by Gary Ham, his first career punt for Nate Reed. And oh, did he come up aces as you see Najee Pruden have a chat with uh, Doug Martin. But so now Ohio, they got some work to do. They got to secure the football here as Austin Everson. We'll go to Mitch Morcillo on that big fullback on that quick trap. He'll ramble his way up to the uh, the eight yard line. So that's a quick seven on first down for Mitch Morcillo. Well, if, if you look at Morcillo, I mean, this young guy is just a classic fullback. 6'1", 246 pounds, a red shirt freshman. But one thing that you see him do, he keeps his pads down. You, by, by your pads, what I'm referring to is your shoulders. Your shoulders down and your eyes up. We call that good pad level. And at the same time, keep those big legs churning. Nice run. Nice run by Marcelo. Yeah, behind J.J. Nab, that center. Mike Einan, the sophomore, left guard. And Matt Miller, the right guard. And now give the football to the tailback. Yes. Calvin McCray wiggles his way out over the 10, and that is a first down. So, you know, McCray, who uh, in that first half uh, garnered 67 yards on the ground for uh, Ohio with a touchdown. That's big to move the sticks on a couple of runs here after they uh, started from inside their one. There's no question. You punt the ball down to the one yard line, your defense has to make something happen. They're a bit soft now up front, possibly just a little bit fatigued. They've been on the field an awful lot. But give credit, great credit to the Bobcat offensive line. Keep it on the ground. Calvin McCray had a little bit of a seam and rambled his way out to the, close to the 19-yard line. So that's six, seven more on first down. And, and again, Bob, J.J. Nab, the center, wears number 53. Matt Miller, the 311-pound right guard, number 79. There's Mike Einan, the 300-pound sophomore left guard, getting it blocked up front. Well, I don't think there's any question. Frank Solich, I'm sure, communicated with Tim, Tim Albin, his offensive coordinator, and said, hey, look, we're going to run the ball until we have to throw the football. After the gain of a, a seven. Calvin McCray, second and three now. Line to make out at the 22-yard line. Play action, Everson. That throwback, he's got McCray with a convoy. Calvin McCray, oh, he got belted down by Fritz Jacquez, that hard-hitting strong safety. But that's a 15-yard hookup. Bob, you like the way that throwback is designed off misdirection? Yes, I do. And one of the reasons why you're able to do this successfully is because you're going to you're going to start out this way and then come back. You're going to get the play action fake and then come back. And here it is. He's, the great news right there is he sells the play because he starts out as a blocker. And the defender comes off of him thinking it's a running play. Most impressive beginning of this drive that started inside the one. 
Calvin McCray got the carry, and uh, McCray was taken down after a gain of uh, just one. As Cedric Maxwell, the inside linebacker for Kent State, 223 pound sophomore, made the stop. And Bob, let's not forget now, defensive numbers wise, this Kent State football team, there's McCray's work on the day, and he's done it against the number one scoring defense in the MAC. Kent State, Pete Rextus's group. We loved our chat with Pete yesterday. Played for Jim Tressel at Youngstown State in his playing days. Kent State's defense only gives up 17 points a game. First in the MAC, the best. He gave up 17 in the first half. Calvin McCray right back on the ground following J.J. Nabb and Matt Miller. Let's take a look at the MAC defensive numbers. Danny Muir on the stop there. And it'll show you that Pete Rextus's group First in a pair of categories, Bob, and second in allowing less than 300 yards total to opposing offenses per game. Well, it, Pete Rexis does a magnificent job. Studied a little bit under Dean Pease. I have to, I have to say that it, it, in all candor, I give uh, Doug Martin a lot of credit. He saw a great young coach in the previous uh, regime, and he hung on to him and made him the coordinator. Third and five with motion from Cheeto uh, Noah Kocha. Emerson with time, going to swing it out to McCray, but he's in trouble. Calvin McCray is taken down. A most secure hit came from Jamison Kuntz. First time we've called Kuntz today. He's an outside backer, 210-pound sophomore. Ten-yard loss on a third and five. Nice job by Kuntz. And it's a good thing that that ball was fielded because it would have been a lateral. Kuntz comes up and makes the play. Very, very significant play for this young guy. He's out in space, lowers his shoulder, keeps his legs going, and most importantly, starts to wrap the ball carrier. You have to wrap the ball carrier. Well, Ohio needs Matt Lasher to hit a big one, and it didn't happen. Off the side of his foot, we'll get into Kent State territory, but the Golden Flashes will have excellent operating position as we're a few seconds inside the halfway point of quarter number three. Does Kent State close the gap? They're down by 10. You see the players from both the squads are leaving the field while we were in uh, break on the change of possession. Let's go back and listen to just moments ago what referee Alex Kemp announced. Lightning has been sighted. The game will be suspended until we can determine lightning is out of the area. The safety. And the security of uh, everyone here at Dick Stadium, uh, players, fans inclusive, as this rain comes just down in torrents now. And what a weather day this has been. We've seen everything from uh, sleet and hail to a few snow flurries to rain and, yes, sunshine at a couple of different times today. As uh, the temperature has bounced under the 40-degree mark and the winds are really whipping up now. So this game has been suspended while uh, you know, the lightning that they've seen visibly in the area is uh, determined when it might subside. So we will uh, we will have the suspension in this one with uh, Ohio on top of Kent State. With, uh, as we said, just had gone a little bit past the halfway point of this third quarter. It'll be Kent State's football when play is resumed in very good field position with Ohio head coach Frank Solich. All right, Michael, thank you very much. Frank, what do you do after a delay? How do you get the guys back out here, get them ready to go? Well, I think both teams probably used the, the time to make some adjustments from what we've seen so far in the second half. Um, and we just talked to them about not knowing for sure. It could, there could be a second delay at some time, so be ready for almost anything. Uh, we started getting them stretched a little bit in the locker room, then finished it off here, so we'll be ready to go. It'll be important for us to get a hard start here right when that first snap is taking place here in the third quarter. Strange way to play a football game, though. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little <laughs> different, but you know what? Uh, there's only one way to play it, and that's whatever comes your way to play it hard, and that's what we hope to be able to do. Frank, thanks for your time. All right, Jim, thank you. Frank Solich, ladies and gentlemen. Michael? Okay, Jeff, do appreciate that as uh, you know, Frank Solich said, you got to prepare, Bob, possibly for uh, another weather delay. Uh, and so, guys, and this 40-minute delay has uh, now come to an end. And this is Julian Edelman on his first play after the suspension of play. And Edelman uh, got back on that, that first down uh, carry after he was looking to put the ball in the air. Got about one, and we're going to call this second and nine. So, Bob, inside seven minutes left. And, you know, here... Julian Edelman comes out, and we said before the weather delay hit, this is an extremely important drive for Kent State right now to get points on the board. The mo one most important drive in this football game thus far. 
Liam. That got the football to one of the leading receivers in the nation, Najee Pruden. And this is the tailback. That's Tony Howard trying to tough run his way inside the 45. So give Howard about a uh, four, a long four, before he was taken down. It's going to bring up a third and three to keep the, uh, the drive alive. I like Doug Martin's first call after we came back after the delay. Everybody anticipated runs. So he ran a play action pass, errant as it was, but I do like the call. When you come back on the field like defenses are anticipating a bit of conservatism until you start to get into, into rhythm again and into sync. Now the line to make is at the 41-yard line. Four wide receivers for Edelman. Edelman on that quarterback keeper. Trying to get to the outside, and he got dragged down. That football is loose as Ohio says they got on it. And I think it squirted on that boundary out of bounds before the Bobcats uh, got it secure. Tremendous tackle, I think, from Steven Jackson. Or now it was uh, instead uh, their uh, strong linebacker. There's uh, Michael Graham on the hit. Maybe a small thing initially, but when you look at it, had that football been in his outside arm, that ball would have unconditionally gone out of bounds. He had the football toward the fray, so to speak. Bobcats caused the fumble, couldn't gain possession of the ball, so consequently, Kent State continues to have the football. We'll punt here on fourth down. So bring up fourth down and eight, and again, it's Nate Reed who hit that 57-yard bomb a little bit ago. It's not a bad boot as you got... Uh, a great lag on that, got it to turn over, and so it's going to put Ohio on that long field as 39-yard punt for Nate Reed as it's uh, down by that long snapper, Matt Muller. And that's where Ohio will get the football for the first time following the suspension of play. We'll see Austin Everson and the Bobcat offense when we get back. Jeff Phelps down on the sideline with our uh, tremendous cast of uh, Mac Television Network production crew that we uh, just mentioned. And this is the toss sweep to Calvin McCray, and it's going to be uh, coming back on the hold as uh, McCray tried to get that corner turned and uh, got chased down by that Kent State defensive pursuit led by Jamison Coots, but it'll come back anyway. This is going to be on Mitch Morsillo, thir number 39, extended his arm and grabbed the jersey of the defender. I think very, very, very evident. Again, keep your hands inside when you're blocking on the perimeter, you'll be fine. Holding, offense, number 39. Half the distance of the goal, still first down. That's a football player right there. That is a football player. You call him a throwback, don't you? I call him a throwback. I love this kid. But uh, that's not going to ingratiate himself to his head football <laughs> coach, Frank Solich, who was a great fullback in his own right. Yes, he. I remember on the cover of Sports Illustrated back in uh, Frank Solich, uh, the fullback of uh, the big Nebraska Cornhusker run because they were beating Oklahoma. Playing in 1965, and so it's right here out of, uh, out of uh, Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, and found his way to Nebraska. Austin Everson, they're going to keep that football on the ground and run Calvin McCray on that first and 15. He got a couple. You know, the thing that's been impressive about Ohio, Bob, it's been a team, you look at them, they start the year with two straight wins, one of them on the road against Northern Illinois. Then they lose three in a row. Frank Solich told me this week that, you know what, we played well against Rutgers. They're undefeated, right? Yes. Against Gary Pinkle in Missouri, they've only lost one. And uh, then the, the, the one that they were disappointed about is when at home, the loss to Bowling Green in Mac play. But since then, they've reeled off three straight more wins. Well, that's, that's the experience of Frank Solich, getting a football team prepared every week, regardless of what the result was the week before. Now motion for Chris Garrett. That inside handoff will uh, go to Calvin McCray, and McCray got uh, popped at the 10-yard line. So McCray got taken down there. You know, that particular play right there, I like the way that play was, was organized. You gave the inside handoff, but you had the flanker coming around behind the quarterback for the fake of the reverse. That freezes the corners. When those corners are froze that way, if the ball would declare itself outside the back of, of, of the defense, those corners are playing catch-up ball. I like that way. I like that play. I like the way the play was designed. Next time, you fake to the fullback, and you give it to that end-of-round play, and you may have something going. So sophomore Cedric Maxwell, the Kent State linebacker, uh, be assisted off the football field. Only one of six are the uh, Bobcats of Ohio on their third down conversions today. And they're looking at the third and long here, third and 12. And Bob, you wonder now, I mean, you know, this is a ball hawking Kent State secondary. Now Frank Solich, uh, he, he's got a tough leader here, but he wants them to be very judicious with the football down here deep in their own territory. Term coaches use, take care of the football. On third and 12, and Everson wants to go up top. He'll set up screen right, 
and that was short hopped and incomplete to Calvin McCray. And Ohio's got to boot it away. As, uh, Everson wanted to set up screen right. They let that defensive front from Kent State get there and try to get those blocks set up. Well, Everson was under duress even in, even in that situation. Just put a little air under the ball. Get it out into the flat. It's not that difficult to throw. We see Frank Solich talking to him as he comes off the field. Got to make that throw, young man. Eugene Jarvis wears number six. John Drager wears number 22. They're standing at Ohio's 45-yard line to receive this boot from Matt Lasher. And Lasher hit a beauty. Jarvis having problems all the way back at the 35. What a weapon Matt Lasher is in every aspect of the kicking game for Ohio. He's been tremendous today. 55-yard boot in the swirling winds. Yeah. Ward off these elements, Bob, best way you can. Somebody told him not to forget his cap, and he forgot it. <laughs> he had gloves. <laughs> have a cap and a pair of gloves in this weather. Well, we hope you are uh, warm and uh, toasty, wherever you may be. Delighted to have you part of it with, uh, as we said, first place on the line in the back east. Jeff Phelps, what about this Ohio defense that you've been observing today? Well, the Bobcats, when they came off the field after the, after the last Kent State possession, Michael, uh, all, all fired up. Michael Mitchell, the safety, said pound on the ball. When Edelman has the ball, he will cough it up. So that's what they're going to try to do when Edelman has that football. Four wide receivers, Edelman off that play fake on that quarterback keep, and nothing happening as once again the hit came from uh, Ernie Hodge. This is how Julian Edelman lost the football on the Michael Mitchell hit a moment ago. When you play a quarterback like Edelman, you have to have discipline. You never know what he's going to do. You have to remain with your assignment before you start to pursue him because he could start with the football in one direction bring it right back at you. Edelman looking to put it up. Going to zip that throw out here to this near sideline. He's got his H-back, Marcus Hill, but it has been few and far between as far as the pass game has gone today for Julian Edelman. Edelman had uh, thrown uh, just uh, eight times, three of eight for 18 yards as he was able to hit Hill there, but it's going to bring up a third and eight. Credit Mitchell in the, in the secondary coming up and making a good tackle. You know, you said this before, Michael, tackling is a, is, is a dying art. Yeah. A lot of guys like to come in and bam, lower his shoulder. I like the guys that wrap and bring their legs. Keep waiting for Najee Pruden to see if he can get the football in his hands. Edelman going to throw it, traffic, and it is caught. And that should be good enough for a first down. Sean Bales in a crowd went up the ladder to haul in the Edelman throw. You have to have great vision as a quarterback. Here he is stepping up. He's under duress. He dodges the first defender and throws the ball back across. But the trajectory of the ball is what made that play. He didn't throw it on a line. He didn't let a, let a lot of air under. He gave it a perfect, perfect touch. Sean Bales, 11-yard reception. Now go back to the ground game. Eugene Jarvis, not a lot of room to operate. It's probably going to come back on a hold on Kent State, and yes, it will. Well, the Bobcat defensive line right now is dominating the line of scrimmage. Kent State's offensive line, which has been just magnificent throughout the entire year, needs to regroup. Maybe get a little shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder and get a little push in there before they start going out to the flanks. Holding, Holding. offense, number 61. 10-yard penalty, still first down. Sean Donaldson, and Donaldson uh, came in after uh, Craig Raffdahl, uh, the senior 305-pounder, was injured. And I don't believe that uh, not Raffdahl is uh, still on the sideline, so Donovan has uh, replaced him, Bob, at the right guard spot. Uh, first and 20 now with the clock moving inside the two-minute mark. Edelman on that quarterback draw. Julian Edelman breaking tackles again and got about 10 back to near the original line of scrimmage. The young man who uh, had been the first Kent, that young man right there, first Kent State quarterback ever with a touchdown throw and a touchdown run, at least one of them in five straight games. All right, watch here. There's initial contact. He spins out of the contact, gets upfield, keeps his feet going, lowers his pads. The yards that you gain after the first yard. First contact is called hidden yardage, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Second and 10, through that square in route. What a tremendous grab from Najee Pruden. Edelman zipped it on time. We got a late flag to go with it on a face mask. There's Najee Pruden showing up in a prime time spot for Kent State. Face mask, defense, number three. Five yard penalty. 
added to the end of the run. First up. Talk about vision on a young guy and putting the ball in the only place it could be thrown, away from the defender to the far shoulder of the receiver. It's a great catch, but that was a great throw. Hidden yardage, why it's important to uh, sharp hidden yardage. In other words, the yardage a back gets after he's first touched and not wrapped, that tells the defense whether they're tackling effectively or they're not. 30th catch of the year from Najee Pruden and his first one today. And that was a, a, an outstanding grab in traffic as T.J. Wright was draped on. Edelman again. Going to run that reverse. Want to put it up is Marcus Hill, and he's in trouble, and down he goes at the 39-yard line. Hill was looking to put it up either to Eugene Jarvis or to Sean Bales, who had gotten deep. Well, that there was a multiplicity of effect with this play. It starts out as an option play. Then they pitch it to the back coming around, not to the option back. Then we're asking him to throw the football. That's an awful lot to do. Any play that is slow developing, and that was there, Buys time for the defensive pursuit. Michael Graham, senior outside linebacker. He stayed home, and uh, he was draped on Marcus Hill. Edelman wants to go up top. Going to go on that fade route, and it is dropped by Marcus Hill. Hill in coverage with the young man we just mentioned, Michael Graham. Edelman looked like he put that ball in a good spot, and Hill wasn't able to haul it in. Well, this is what you want. It's a, it's a mismatch. You've got a, you've got a wide receiver on Michael Graham, who's six feet, 212 pound, outside linebacker. The ball is thrown in a very, very good fashion. The ball should have been caught. He actually had it in his hands. He needed to pull it into his midsection. Nice job there by Graham of getting a hand on the football and dislodging it from his grasp. Bring up now third and 14, and Edelman wants to go up top. Edelman again, deep square out. Najee Pruden couldn't hang on. Near the 10-yard line. As Julian Edelman trying to find some things in the passing game. He's had a couple of drops hurt him. Michael, I'm a bit surprised by the play calling. This play calling, as I see it right now, is a bit more desperate than it should be, considering there's four seconds and an entire quarter left to play. Well, Julian Edelman knows it was just that close. Both of them, same spot on the football field. One was that fade where he put air under it. Uh, post corner was run by, uh, by Najee Pruden a moment ago. Now that boot uh, off, the, uh, off the right foot of uh, Nate Reed is going to uh, come to a, an end at the 17-yard line as that is going to expire quarter number three. And Nate Reed has come on to try to put some stability into the Kent State kick game. Ohio's Bobcats on the road. 5-0 and for the first time in MAC history, but they've got to come up with a big final 15 minutes. Both these coaches talked about we need to be stronger and tougher so that we can win games in the fourth quarter. Off that play action and off that waggle left, this is Austin Everson on that quarterback keep. Everson got 13 in the first down. There may be more tacked onto that with that late flag. I think this is going to be a hold on J.J. Nabb, Michael. Okay. The center that led the play. Yet again, a, a, a football player get, gets his hands outside the framework of the body. As I mentioned, keep your hands inside. I can't say it enough. Get out there and you start tugging on that shirt. Everybody sees it. Holding. Offense. Number 86. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Now two quarterbacks that have had uh, big passing days this year and uh, their team's wins, but not today. As uh, through three quarters, uh, Austin Everson, 6 of 12, 20, 41 yards, and Julian Edelman again State, 6 of 13 for 45 yards. So it's been about the run games today and playing good defense. Well, and penalties are, are definitely more magnified considering the weather conditions and how important field position is. Well, that spot foul is going to make it first and eight now from the 19-yard line, I formation behind... Ohio quarterback Austin Everson. Run toss sweep McCray footballs down on the ground and Calvin McCray was able to get back on top of it. And well, this is where Kent State defensively one of the best in the nation plus turnovers and they weren't able to get to that as McCray got on it. He needs a little bit of a softer touch. That ball needs to be thrown, pitched at basically chest level. But at the same time, the tailback, you look that football in as though it were a pass. You get it in, you secure the football before you run with it. How many times have we heard that? Catch the football, then run with it. Don't look upfield. 
if you don't have the football looking upfield all day, whether there's no one in front of you, this is going to do a bit of good. As Ohio came out to line up for a second and 13, and the Bobcats are going to take a timeout and try to get this sorted out. All right, first timeout of the second half for Frank Solich. We'll come back and get back to it. Ohio's on top by 10 over Kent State. <laughs> Tuesday night. That'll suit you just fine, Coach. Well, one of the things his offense needs is a little bit of a, a little bit of a <laughs> trick if they're going to get a treat. <laughs> I hear you. Well, there's Austin Everson today, though, and talking to Frank Solich this week. Solich told us that this is an excellent leader of his football team that is now uh, in his 18th straight game of running this offense. Frank said he's one of the toughest football players he has ever been associated with. Everson there got dragged down from behind. What from the backside of that uh, that defense came Kevin Hogan, the uh, the hard charging 210 pound true freshman. Young man that possesses great speed, great athleticism, and he's just a young guy. I mean, he's a freshman at 6'3", 210 pounds. This young guy fills out. One thing critical in the athlete in, in the weight room, you gotta get them bigger. You don't want to let them lose their athleticism through lifting weights. Well, Kevin Hogan, a, a state ranked wrestler here in the high school ranks in the state of Ohio, and he's absolutely unblockable as he's taken over as a true freshman. Everson looking to put it up with all kinds of time and that throw is going to say a lot of bounds and Kent State once again should get pretty good field position as uh, Ohio offensively on that uh, what would a uh, three and out wouldn't have been that way if they didn't have the face mask after Everson ran for 13 yards on the first play of the series. Well again you know it, you, you coach this, you coach this, you coach against this, you coach against foolish penalties. You bring them over the side, you talk to them about it, you tell them, we need field position. We cannot be taken out of field position by unforced errors, i.e. holding face mask, offside, things of that nature. Well, Matt Lasher standing in his own goal line. Kent State trying to get after him. Uh, he did not get that one to turn over quite as well. Eugene Jarvis for the 45. Jarvis with a burst, a 10-yard return. Dragged down at the 35 yard line by TJ Wright after the 31 yard boot for Lasher. Bob Kamel, 12.56 left and a great operating position for Kent State. And character on the home field in the program of uh, head coach Doug Martin, Jeff Phillips. Go ahead. Michael, after they went 1 and 10 last year, Doug decided the program needed an overhaul in character. Came up with a plan to change that. He picked 12 players to be the captains of six different groups of players and had them compete in attending class, weightlifting, some other things. And how's this for Bolt? He had the captains draft teams and then told the players where they were drafted to motivate some of the guys who were chosen last by their teammates. Obviously, it's worked, though, fellas. Turned out really well for Kent State so far this year. Oh, absolutely. And that Julian Edelman first down carry. And uh, when we visited with uh, Doug Martin, even before the Akron game, he said, I told him, you got to have a belief in the system, but also the work hard, but be patient. If you're patient and you stay diligent, good things will happen. Well, one of the things, voting uh, by a, a jury of your peers, so to speak, no one knows the football team like other football players. I give the football to uh, that backup tail, Tony Howard. As uh, Howard tried to wedge his way back uh, through the middle for a couple. And uh, that, that hit came from uh, the, uh, the outside linebacker, Tyler Russ of Ohio. It's going to bring up a third and five, as you see. We're inside 12 minutes left, and this drive started on the 36-yard line in Ohio territory. And uh, well, Kent State has had terrific operating position about three different occasions today and have not been able to capitalize. Let's see here. Blitz coming on Edelman. Edelman going to come back middle. And it was broken up and then almost caught on the deflection by Najee Pruden. T.J. Wright out of the state of Texas, the senior corner on the pass breakup for Ohio. Well, Edelman is so, so difficult to defend when he comes out into the flat. Great vision. The one thing I don't like there is throwing the football back across the formation. But again, you talk about running to the football, whether you're on offense or defense. Najee Pruden right there ran to the football, perhaps thinking that his uh, teammate would make the catch and he'd be there for a block. But running to the football, good things will happen. He almost got the tip pass. All right, fourth and five now. Line to make the 31-yard line to keep it alive. Everson going to float his throw middle, and it was broken up by Tyler Russ. And there's a late flag now that was thrown 
in the direction of where Russ steered that away from Brian Bell, and this may keep the drive alive for Kent State. It will. I don't think there's any question Pass that this interference. is de defense number 26. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Just before he made contact with the football, the defender Ross reached out and had him around by the right side of his waist. I think that's a good call by this crew. And I don't think Frank Solich is <laughs> quite in agreement with it as you see the look on uh, the native Clevelander, Ohio's head coach. So that's going to uh, keep the football with Kent State. That was a fourth and five, and the interference call on Tyler Russ. Now misdirection on that counter play. Eugene Jarvis can't get started. I think it's going to be a hold on Kent State anyway, as Jarvis tried to get a block from Big Gus Parrish. Well, I take that back. Offside, Ohio. One of the Ohio defenders just before the snap of the ball snapped in, uh, stepped, excuse me, into the neutral zone. Uh, th this is offside defense number 55 five yard penalty still first down I mean, you want you, you, when you're in that position you see the football you see the football don't move until that ball starts to come back to the quarterback but that's a red zone work of Kent State today in the end zone once for their only touchdown of the day and they turned it over on downs once Edelman speed option right Jarvis looking to find a crease couldn't he was tracked down from behind as uh, that uh, hit was made by Shane Yates Yates getting off his blocks to uh, make the tackle and uh, also some help from Eric King interesting call considering the balls on the hash and they ran the option play into the boundary the boundary acts as the 12th defender I'd like to run that play a little bit to the field and give Jarvis a little more room to work. All right, second and two now. Edelman out of the gun. Give the football to Eugene Jarvis and Landon Cohen, number 55. He came knifing through to make the initial contact on Eugene Jarvis. Cohen has had a terrific day, Bob. There is no doubt in my mind Landon Cohen will one day play in the National Football League. He is big, he is strong, he's athletic. Again, he's an upfield player, but he plays like a defensive man. Great speed. Big play here, Julian Edelman. Eugene Jarvis put it on the ground at the 18-yard line. It's going to bring up a fourth down and uh, in the neighborhood of about four. And you're going to have to think that right now, Reed Macko is coming on the football field. As we look at Jarvis again, simply did not put the football away. No, he didn't. And you support the football at three points. The front of the football by the palm of your hand, the back of the football by your bicep, and the side of the football as much against your side, your hip, your skin, whatever as you possibly can. Can't look upfield either without having possession of the football. You're going to drop it. You have to have focus and concentration. Well, how crucial is this for Reed Macko? 35-yard attempt, right hash mark into the swirling wind. Well, that line drive shot, and he missed it wide left. Macko missed it wide left, and the lead will stay at 10 for Ohio with 9.18 to go. And as you watch the sideline after the errant field goal attempt, you look across the field at Kent State, people walking off the field. You see the, the Bobcats here, they see it missed. He pulled it just a little bit. I remember one thing, he is not usually asked to kick field goals as well as punt. I don't know if that made a big difference, but that's a field goal that he should be able to make. But as I said before, Kent State slowly meanders off the field. The Bobcats see the air uh, field goal attempt. The whole sideline is electric. The defense comes down. They've had a great stop, and they'll build on that. Uh, Danny Muir and uh, Colin Farrell, two of the leaders on the Kent State defense, they came on the football field and said, uh, trying to uh, exhort the troops. But it remains now a 10-point game with Ohio on top. And Austin Everson back out to run his offense. Well, he's going to use as much play clock as he can. Don't blame him. Remember, with the new rules, clock started as soon as that ball was ready for play. Ohio to run the toss sweep with Calvin McCray. McCray maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. And that is about it. Danny Muir on that stop who wears number five. Colin Farrell was in the neighborhood as well. 
A play like that, when you see a ball go to the perimeter, you don't necessarily, as a down lineman, want to pursue across the line of scrimmage. You want to create a new front, slide to the football, slide to the football. Then as the ball declares itself, go and get it. I like this Muir kid. Oh, he's tremendous. He's a 285 pounder. He can really run. And of course, he was inside at a tackle spot. Second leading wrestler in the state of Maryland as a high school guy. Second and uh, we'll call it a long nine. Everson starts option left. Austin Everson using that tough guy approach. Well, he took a pretty good shot as uh, he was greeted by Stefan Moss, 230-pound sophomore who laid a lick on him. Just think of this, Michael. Think of this. Frank Solich, 25 years at the University of Nebraska as a player and a coach, takes Austin Everson and describes him as one of the toughest That's football right. players he's been around. Those are high, high accolades. High accolades, no question about it. And, uh, you know, Frank Solich said the way that this young man has come in and grasped the system. And, again, you're talking about his 20th consecutive start after he started all 11 last year. Now Everson off that play fake. Being chased on his sideline. Came back middle, and his throw is caught by Thomas Christie. That's an Ohio first down. Christie coming across the formation with quarterback Austin Everson and made the sliding grab. Here's Presence. He starts to run the football, almost starts to tuck it away, and which he does. He comes up, sees that the, you talk about great vision, and you talk about a nice job of Christie. Christie slides with Everson. That's why he's in position to make uh, to make the catch. Yet again, Michael, South Euclid, Ohio, a St. Ignatius kid, formerly under the tutelage of Coach Chico Kyle. I can't emphasize enough what a great program Chico runs up there in the Cleveland area. One of the best in the country. Indeed. Year in and year out. And Austin Everson, after that big first down conversion, is now going to take a timeout. Ohio. With a 10-point lead and the football inside the seven-minute mark. A little bit more on building the Bobcats' fortunes when we get back. A couple of scores on the road feeling real good about themselves. Mitch Morcillo. Look at the big man rumble as he takes it to the 35-yard line. Morcillo with 19 yards. Quick trap. And oh, did he get big blocks from the center and the guards. I have to tell you, I cannot get enough of this young guy running the football. Look at his strength. Look at his bam. Look at that pad level. Look at that pad. Bam again. You know what? You tell a fullback, become your own best blocker. As that pursuit came, he took that forearm, we used to call the old flipper, wackle, right underneath pad under pad, and kept, keeps his legs going. Ohio's Bobcats approaching the 200-yard mark on the ground, rushing-wise, against one of the most stout defenses in the Mid-American Conference. This is Austin Everson, option right. Everson in open space, riding that tackle of Usama Young of Kent State down to the 23-yard line. That's 14 more. And now this ground game behind the strong offensive line of Ohio starting to wear and lean on Kent State. This is the kind of football Frank Solich likes to play. Yeah, I mean, they're just a little bit of a smirk on his face and saying, hey, fellas, I love this. Just keep it going. You got those big guys up front are doing a job, and that, that's a fraternity within a fraternity. Well, Matt Coppage at left tackle wears number 78, the senior. You see uh, David Shelby, Matt Miller, that 310-pound right guard. Coppage graded out at 92% uh, last week in his uh, 51 snaps play in that win uh, over Buffalo. This time, Kent State's defense is there with uh, Stefan Moss to uh, rudely greet tailback Calvin McCray before he could uh, maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. But inside five minutes left now, and uh, Ohio uh, kind of primed themselves to put more points on the board. One of the things in football today, whether it's college football or the National Football League, you very seldom see a lot of fullback play. It's not in vogue anymore. People use tight ends as fullbacks. People use the one back set. I'm in favor of using a fullback. If you want to get your, your running back past linebacker depth, you have to have a lead blocker. That's second and ten now. Motion from Chris Garrett, and Garrett will get that reverse handoff. Chris Garrett inside the 20. He was dragged down uh, from behind uh, by Larry Brown, Kent State's 308-pound senior D-tackle. 
Lars Larry wears number 91. But boy, this drive, Kent State's got to call the timeout. And, and Bob, this, this is a time consuming drive that has moved the sticks and taken three and a half minutes off the clock for Ohio. I think when you look out on the field, you see Colin Farrell, big number 55. When you see those guys walking <coughs> off the field and they've got their hands on their hips, that's a sure sign of fatigue. They've been on the field a long time. Calvin McCray in that Ohio offense uh, out the sideline. Bobcats have the football and up by 10. Team riding high in here. First four game back win streak at school history. Trying to uh, win overall their sixth in a row dating back 30 years of Kent State football. But they've run into a very formidable defensively uh, strong Ohio football team today. It's really uh, dominated this one. Austin Everson in control of the Ohio offense. They moved the football and put points on the board in order to take and maintain the lead. This is a third and six now from the 19 for Ohio. Give the football to tailback Calvin McCray. Tried to break a tackle, and he's going to uh, wedge his way very close to the first down inside the 15. And uh, we are probably going to get this timeout from Kent State as it's going to bring up a fourth down and one as uh, the Golden Flash is trying to conserve what's left of this clock now down by 10. That was an outstanding football play right there by by the tackle by the right tackle David Shelby pulling and leading the play. There's Shelby wears number 52 Bob the 300 pound junior right tackle. Watch him pull and trap and then yet adjust to the block. In other words, he's not just pulling and trapping, but he has to adjust on the run right there, come back inside. That's not easy for a big guy to do. That shows great, great talent and great athleticism yet again for a young guy who's, I mean, Shelby is 6'4", 299 pounds. You know, coaches say he has great feet. You have to have great feet to be able to turn back on a linebacker. I'm calling him a 300 pounder because I know he ate that big jumbo power well, breakfast. He's 290. Today. He'd have been 300 pounds <laughs> if it wouldn't have been for the break. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of offensive lines, though. Trying to be a little leaner as we take a look at the, the Mac East, as we said. It was for uh, the penthouse in the, the Mac East. And Kent State, perfect, but uh, kind of uh, on the ropes here right now, like a big heavyweight as uh, Ohio looking to tie up the conference with Kent State at 4-1 and one if they can win it here today to set up a uh, very tremendous November. Fourth and two now. Morcillo and McCray in the eye, and now it's Ohio that wants a timeout as Frank Solis appears not to be happy at his offensive football team. Well, when you come off the when you come off the sideline and get out over the football and don't get into the right play, I mean, it's one thing to signal a play in or send someone in with the play, but to come off the sideline and then have to take a timeout, that'll upset Coach Solich. When you talk about some of these football players in the Mid-American Conference, I love this conference, as you well know. There were 33 drafted NFL players, drafted college players, into the NFL from the Mid-American Conference in the past four years. And I defy any other conference to be able to say this. Five former MAC quarterbacks may, I say may, start in the NFL this weekend. Redkowski, Fry, Roethlisberger, Pennington, Leftwich, Cribs, Bash, Omar Jacobs. I mean, you know, they're not all on active rosters, but at the same time, that tells you about what type of conference this is and the level of play and the great recruiting that these coaches have done. It has exploded on the scene. There's no question about that over the last decade. And uh, the strength of schedule that Frank Solitz is playing, well, you know, 37 and 22 as they've gone 5 and 3. So that means the, the opponents are plus 15 uh, to the good on the 500 side. And it's a big play right here. Fourth and two. You've got the jumbo look. Three tight ends in for Frank Solich and only the fullback, Mitch Morsillo, the 246 pounder behind Austin Everson. Need two to keep the drive alive. And do we get movement from Tom Christie on the left side of that Ohio line? I think so. Offense, number 81, five yard penalty. Fourth down. It was Thomas Christie who made the big sliding catch for a first down earlier in this drive. Changes the entire dynamic of the decision and of the play. That that is totally, totally uncalled for. You have to off two timeouts. Exactly. You have to sit in there. You have to sit in there. 
But what it does, it brings the very talented right leg of Matt Lasher on the football field. And if Lasher connects here, this makes this a two touchdown deficit for Kent State. 37 yarder out of the hold of Austin Everson. Right dead center from the uprights. Everson's going to pick it up and fake it. Make his throw, and it's coming up short and knocked down incomplete. He wanted William Norwood on the fake, and it was batted down out of that special team from Kent State on the fourth and two. A little bit surprised there. Here's the problem with this throw. You're asking a person to throw the football who's not normally a quarterback, but here's the deal. He, it's a great fake, it's a well-conceived play, but look, lead him. The ball is on the throne. If the ball is thrown and hits him on the run, he's running into the end zone. The ball was under thrown. Backup linebacker Derek Burrell on the big play. Now what does Julian Edelman find? Edelman will come underneath, and that throw was dropped as it was a little bit behind. And Julian Edelman was Sean Bales' his wide receiver as Kent State's got the football back with 3.51 left fourth quarter and trailing by 10. Julian Edelman is playing now against 12. He's playing against the 11 on the field and that person up in the scoreboard called the clock. Or not that person, the vehicle up in the scoreboard called the clock. A at this point in time, this is where it gets very, very difficult. Edelman to step up to avoid pressure. Julian Edelman near that first down mark at the 30-yard line, and Edelman uh, gonna, looks like he's going to have that first down as he scrambled for 11, and uh, that is going to move the chains for Kent State. Well, if you're going to be in a situation like this and you want a prototype quarterback to move the ball down the field, not only running the ball, throwing the ball, handing the ball off, doing a lot of things, a winner, this is the young guy I want, I, I want on my football team. A very difficult assignment. If it can be done, it can be done by a guy like this. 21 carries for Edelman for 114 yards, but he's got to find some things through the air. Plenty of time here. Edelman gun it deep middle, wide open. Brian Bell got it inside the 40 and finally belted at the 35 yard line. Big, big play at 34 yards. Edelman throwing the strike to Brian Bell. In a word, poise. Coaches talk about poise. You go to a coaching clinic, you talk about a quarterback, you sell poise to your quarterback. Edelman right here. Talk about just an, a, a, an example of that term. Poise, under the rest, finds the wide receiver, puts the ball right on the money. Again, four wide for Edelman. Gonna step up. Looking to throw that fade deep to the corner, and it is broken up by Mark Parsons in the hands of Marcus Hill. They battled for the football, and Parsons came away winning the duel. Well, here's the old story. Who wants it? I got it. You've got it. Who wants it? This is where you start to say, hey, this is where a want-to play has to be made. Parsons, great job of getting the arm over and stripping. The ball was actually almost caught, but at the same time, the wide receiver pulled the ball inside. Get both hands on it. Squeeze it. Now Edelman again on second and ten. Julian Edelman with a lot of real estate in front of him. Good cutback inside the 25, down to the 22. Isn't he fun to watch, the sophomore from California? That's a first down, Kent State, 13-yard ramble. You know, Michael, you, we, we talk in athletics about a guy who's got a motor. And you know what, what that means is he never, ever stops. He is like the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going and going and going. And again, if I'm in this situation, this is the guy who I want as my quarterback. Fresh set of downs for Edelman. Look out, blitz coming. He'll avoid the heat. Looking Sitko end zone. He was open, and that throw sailed by him and fell incomplete. Saw Thomas Sitko caught the, the touchdown pass in the first half from Julian Edelman. He was open, Bob, but that, that throw got away from Julian. That would have been a tough throw. That was, that was a tough throw. That would have been a tough throw and catch. But at the same time, even the fact that he found the receiver in the end zone, again, running under a rush, running under duress, this young man has a lot of great football ahead of him. Edelman 7 of 18 today. Threw for over 300 against Kent, uh, against Akron. A lot of pressure coming. And that pass is batted away and knocked down. Beautiful defensive play by senior linebacker Michael Graham. One of the things with Graham, we've seen him in man-to-man -man coverage time and again. And you talk about a defensive coordinator, you get a linebacker that's six feet tall, 212 pounds, and you trust him to be in man coverage, that speaks volumes about the type of ability this young man has as a pass defender. 
Well, now it's going to make up a third down and ten. And uh, well, you wonder if points are not garnered by Kent State here inside the three minute mark. Uh, we've got a flag and uh, looks like it's going to be on. Are they going to get Ohio for that or is it going to be motion on Kent State? Full start. Offense number 61. Five yard penalty. Third down. I question that call. I really do. I question that call. I know that those offensive linemen have the opportunity to get set, and they were not even really into a cadence yet. It is an interesting call by the officials. It's going to back Kent State up five. They need to uh, reach the 13 yard line. And they're looking at third and 15 right now. Going to have a couple plays, of course, if they wanted. Edelman, pressure coming, and down he goes. The sack came as pressure from that left side from Ernie Hodge, the true freshman for Ohio. That is their third and final timeout. I've been singing Edelman's praises for the entire day, and I'll continue to do so. But as he progresses as a quarterback, the one thing he has to understand, you cannot take a sack in this position. One of the things I think right now that Doug Martin does not have the luxury of kicking a field goal and then coming back. I mean, he could kick. Yeah, he's going to have to kick a field goal to tie the game if they score again, uh, as we say. But right now, he doesn't have that luxury because his kicking game has just been really it's fourth and 21. So uh, what do you like better? Your chances of picking up a fourth and 21 or a 50-yard field goal attempt. And that's what it will be from here uh, for uh, either Reed Macko or Nate Reed. Michael, I don't think really in this situation he has to get throw the football downfield. This is not going to be a field goal. As you look at those flags in the end zone, they are basically almost coming straight into the face of the um, of the kicker. But at the same time, as I look across the top of the field, those little flags at the top called telltales, mm -hmm. they're somewhat still. So that wind may be kind of a, a higher uh, wind up there as opposed to uh, field level or, or slightly above. And there they are. Well, they're starting to move right now. More on Julian Edelman from Jeff Phelps. Well, he's in his first year at Kent State, guys. His hometown newspaper, the San Francisco Chronicle, talked with him last week, asked him about why he's had such an impact on the flashes. He said, quote, I got there with my cocky swagger. I always have. It's my dream to play QB at a D1 program. He's put himself in that position. Fourth and 21. Needs a big play. Edelman going to dance around, try to create something. Edelman's going to unload it deep to the end zone. And it was in and out of the hands of Sean Bales. And the football goes over on downs to Ohio as Edelman Got his throw in the hands of Bales. It would have been a, a terrific catch if Bales was able to lay out and haul it well, in. I mean, watch this. Talk about determination. Talk about great feet, athleticism, get out of harm's way, look downfield, vision, shake off a, a, a potential uh, defender. That ball, in, in all reality, Michael, Edelman did everything humanly possible to get that ball into the end zone. I'm not so sure when they review that in, in the meetings tomorrow that that ball couldn't have been caught. Yeah, Sean Bays laid out and said it would have been a terrific catch of Landon Cohen, who has been spectacular today. And he is our Huntington Bank player of the game today. His six tackles, three and a half of them for loss, as he was uh, so dominant on that offensive line. Now, Calvin McCray in the cutback, where Stefan Moss took him down. And no timeouts left for Kent State, as uh, Julian Edelman, who has uh, had a day where. Uh, He's tried to use his legs as well as his arm to keep Kent State undefeated, but unless a miracle occurs, it looks like we've got a tie atop the MAC East at four and one for both Kent State and Ohio. You look at that young man on the sideline, the way he played today, and I'll tell you this, this is what makes this a great conference. Mm -hmm. Competitors like this young guy here who believes, you look at that determinant, he believes he should have won that football game. And so much of this game is mental. He'll come back and play again. He's got three years here at Kent State. He very may, well may join that bunch of five or eight quarterbacks that I mentioned that'll play on Sunday one day. Very impressive young man, uh, as has been this entire Ohio football program of Frank Solich coming on the road today. They'll win uh, their fourth in a row as they started this win run against Western Michigan, then beat Illinois in the Big Ten. Went home to drill Buffalo last week and now are just a minute and 24 away. 
Winning their fourth in a row. They'll go to six and three overall and four and one and tie Kent State atop the Mac East. Everson off that play fake. Now he wants to just get down and stay in bounds, period, as he was put down by Danny Muir as that clock keeps running. Well, last night we uh, certainly want to thank uh, the athletic director of Kent State, Lane Kennedy, and his lovely wife, Sandra, as they hosted a, 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 a reception at their home for bowl representatives. And you and uh, Jeff Phelps, yours truly, were all there. Commissioner Rick Chris, Bob Generelli, Del Robinson from the Mac. Good time. Had a lot of fun. It was great. It was a totally first class group of people to be associated with on this evening. And as, as yeah. yourself, Michael, I was honored to have the opportunity. Well, Kirby Hokett, the, uh, the fine uh, athletic director from uh, Ohio, was there at the, the Kennedy household. It was a delight for us to be there as bowl time and consideration for it draws near. And Calvin McCray has come free to put the camper on this one today. Calvin McCray, the maturation uh, that Frank Solich was talking about for not only McCray, of this entire program, the 19-yard scamper for McCray that'll put him over the 100-yard mark for the fourth straight game. First energy play of the game, Moncari Owens to put Ohio on top 7-0, and they were never headed, Bob Camel. I mean, this is Mac football at its best. It is not only Mac football at its best, it's college football at its best. Huge road win for Frank Solich and his Ohio Bobcats as they got it done today on the road here at Dick Stadium. And uh, this is a football team now that has put a four-game win streak together. And uh, heading to Eastern Michigan next week won't be easy, but uh, with a lot of good things happening. So that's going to do it for all of us uh, here inside Dick Stadium today. There's a tie atop the Mac East Division, everybody, with Kent State and Ohio now, both at 4 1, as Ohio's Bobcats come in and beat Kent State 17 7. We appreciate your viewership all day long. And now for our producer, Greg Logan, director Mark Jones, TD Dan Larson, all of our fabulous crew who are so great today. For Jeff Phelps, Bob Camel, I'm Michael Regai. An Ohio Bobcat road win today. We'll see you next week, everybody. So long.